You're tuned in to LE Radio. Free the show, free your mind. Live right here, right now. That truth with no chaser. Hosted by women, but not just for women. All are welcome to get that plug in with Don the CEO. Get out and about with Brittany Lady Poetry. Events Blackboard. Come sip that tea with Gina Boo. Community Spotlight. Stay locked in to LE Radio. An iHeart Radio show. The People's Exchange. Good evening, good evening, and welcome to LE Radio. Free to show, free your mind. I'm your host, Don, and tonight I'm talking about dangerous love. And we all know Beyonce and been dangerously in love, drunk in love, and some other crazy shit in love. But that's what we're talking about tonight. Um, Jealousy, obsession, and control. Oh, so... Anyway, before I get started, um, get started on the dangerous love tip and everything. Are you, are you ready over there, Miss Jessica? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. The last show was the poetic soul out of the street, but she wanted to do this poem on this show because I guess it (laughs) relates, it relates to what we getting ready to talk about. So we're going to open, oh shit. (laughs) See, that's that's what I get for talking shit. I just hit myself in the mouth. (laughs) I didn't mean to make you hit your mouth on the mic. (laughs) But, okay, since she wanted to do it on this show, she said it related to this show, so we're going to let her do it on this show. Uh, Go ahead. The mic is yours. Ah, thank you. Well, this piece is called There. And um, I was really excited when I was on social media today, and I saw that you were um, covering this topic of obsession because I think it's a really, really common problem that we look that mic ain't nowhere near your mouth pull the mic down because oh. they can't hear you pull it down can they hear me now yes. yep yeah yes. because <laughs> at first i'm like it wasn't nowhere you All know right, you yeah, short yeah. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. i was saying i was kind of excited you know usually i don't come down here when you're doing your show but the topic was kind of exciting to me because i feel like people don't talk about abuse inside of a relationship um, as much in public as, as we should, you know. And uh, a few years ago, like, I wrote this poem called There. And this poem is about, um, you know, I, I specialize in erotica for people who don't know who I am. Um, Jessica from the Punani Poets. <laughs> so I'll, I'll usually find some erotic twist to any topic, even abuse. And uh, I was able to do that with this poem. It's about a couple who are involved in, like, BDSM with each other hmm. and they don't really know what they're doing. Oh. <laughs> right. And how dangerous can hurt. it can be <laughs> if you if you don't really know what you're doing. You right. Know? And so they end up in this relationship that is abusive outside of the bedroom. Hmm. Like what started off as like a little light choking and everything becomes right. like abusive. And uh I ended up writing a book about it, like a whole novel oh, wow. on, on the topic. But yeah, so this piece is called There. We did it. We went there. To that place they talk against. That place that ends relationships. That place that stops hearts, kills spirits, breeds fear, fuels hatred, tests boundaries, hurts, ends lives. I had been bad, often. You were strong, always. I needed to be punished. You were good at inflicting pain. You had seen how it was supposed to be done. I was your drunk father. Slap me, pull my hair, spit in my mouth harder, faster, deeper. Fuck me, daddy, I am your bitch. It began. We should stop. I may start to like this, you warned. I could not see your truth for mine. Soon, I could only come this way. Violence is wet and messy, a flood of emotion that leaks everywhere and drains everything. By the time the police were standing between us, our careers were on the line. Our fetish, a freak show. Our friends and family stood in line for tickets, placing wagers, waiting for the next bell to sound and signal another round. 
I looked into the mirror and didn't recognize myself with my scars on the surface. It was a twisted game of the fittest survival. I made you play with me, positioning you so that I could learn to fight back. But in our darkest hour, you showed me where gentle lives inside to the second knuckle up and back. You manipulated the softest part of me. I melted like molten lava in your hand and relinquished control. We did it. We went there to the place that is hell for so many fallen lovers, but we survived it, learned forgiveness, the meaning of grace, and lived to love each other again and to make love to each other without crutches. Mm. That was deep. <laughs> what you think? I was, I'm like, wow. I know it's like then, so <laughs> it's like weird because it's like really like right. <laughs> like they kicking your ass and you decide to fuck them anyway right. well see <laughs> because the the point of bdsm a lot of people like is you know the pleasure from the pain and i get that but it's that's an interesting take on it as far as like the the pain has traveled now outside of the bedroom to our everyday lives mm -hmm. so so i get it you know i really understand okay this is this is good but to an extent so. Yeah, I think I think a lot of people what we don't really consider is that pe some people are into pain. Right. Some people are into pain and and um a lot of times the person you may look at as oh that's the victim mm -hmm. doesn't even realize what they are doing to encourage this behavior, this kind of punishment, mm -hmm. self-fulfilling prophecy kind of right. punishment that um is very inconvenient when misused. You right. know what I'm saying? It's very inconvenient for everyone. Because right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, now you know. Right. You get off on this, but right. at a certain point, it becomes dangerous, or maybe you get woke mm -hmm. one day, and you've right. been allowing it for years, and now you're woke, and now you're a victim. Mm -hmm. Where yeah. you didn't think you were before. And that kind of goes back to what tonight's topic is about dangerous love mm -hmm. jealousy obsession because I personally have heard people make comments like oh well if if that person is jealous or if they beat on me if they do this that means they love me right. so it's kind of like like what you're saying like you, the whole time you're thinking this is what this is supposed to be like mm -hmm. when and then eventually you wake up and like well no but then you don't know how to stop it well and then you know there is um there is a a crescendo that you reach, you know, mm -hmm. and, and a pattern. So when you're in um, codependent relationships is what I want to call it, right. you know, because it's not just ab abusive, mm -hmm. it's codependent. So you create a situation that you can continue in a cycle. Right. And um, sometimes you get to a place that is so, <laughs> so loud and mm -hmm. painful and, and wild energetically because you're screaming at each other back right. and forth and your you know pheromones are high and your energy level is high your endorphins right. everything is all like Wah! yeah and then boom you crash into each other and start fucking mm -hmm. and it's like a a really incredible high people do not well, I ain't Talk never experienced it. that high. Cause it's true. If I'm pissed off and you and made me mad, I don't want you touching me. <laughs> yeah, I mean. So that, uh, I, but I do know what you're saying because yeah. I have been around someone. I had a friend who they was in a relationship for ten years, and it was it was um it was like that. They mm. fought. Um, one of the young ladies tried to the young, drive. She tried to run the other one over. Oh wow! Yeah, she tried to hit her with the car. Barely <laughs> missed her. Barely missed it with the car, whatever. So they out in public, this whole big scene or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then, like, the next day, they was laying up having sex. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> she just almost killed your ass last night. And now you're at her house laying I'm in the bed. I'm telling you, angry house, sex, I guess. That's what I'm talking about. People don't want to talk about it, but it's the true. The next morning, <laughs> after she nearly ran you over, into your life. <laughs> Because some people are like, you but know, too you much must of anything really... is dangerous. To be honest with you, well, I think some people are like, oh, you must really love me if you show out. Right? Nah, 
you know don't now, embarrass me in out. public yeah. that's not love <laughs> well that's again that's from your experience and how you understand it but some people really do and i think that kind of might go back to like childhood when you, when you see a certain behavior you you think because it's normalized to you so you think that's how it's supposed to be because I, I had a friend like that like mm-hmm. she grew up in an abusive household so she constantly saw her father beat on her mother mm-hmm. so now that she's an adult and dating men she equates that yelling and arguing and, and that energy to okay he must really love because she you know her dad really loved her mom but he also did this as well so mm-hmm. she equated that to real love as well mm-hmm. so when she didn't get that she would almost it was almost like to her no, 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 she no, felt no, no, like no 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 I gotta stop you <laughs> people in abusive relationships and what you just said that's where they stay when you talk about something he really loved her if he loved her he wouldn't have been jumping on and beating her ass right but i'm saying that's, as a child she saw that and equated that to love. no cause, but you you came back and said but the daddy really loved the mom that's what she said that I'm, I'm just telling you from what she explained to me is that she felt that the father father kept saying i love you because he would come back and say i'm sorry yeah but I most people you. in domestic violent relationships that's what they do they beat your ass then they say right. i'm sorry and i love you and that's the one mistake but that's not love somebody beating y'all i had a girl slap me one time i never talked to her again <laughs> i mean one time I'm, I'm serious we we were out um i'm not gonna mention that young lady's name but if if my friend Nita was here she'll tell you because she scared the shit out of both of us we had went we was in chicago up wow. north went out had her and this where the jealousy part uh-huh. comes in we out up there whatever i'm a friendly person you speak i'm a, you know i'm smiling all the time you right. know and mr them always say don stop smiling you smile people come over right so we out or whatever she gets upset because we are out and you know when you out in the club typically if you're not all hooked up or whatever you standing next to somebody you could kind of tell if somebody with somebody but you can't really tell if they with somebody right but in in this situation most females if they think you with somebody they're gonna send a friend over they're gonna wait till you walk away anyway right but she she was mad because when they speak, she's like, why are you speaking to her? And I'm like, because uh, <laughs> she said hello, and that's rude not to speak back. And this was like right at the beginning, um, right when I had just started Les Elegance. It was like mm-hmm. right at the beginning of that. Hadn't quite kicked it off yet, but it was right at the at the beginning. So we out, we all having a nice, good time, whatever. So then she in there, she in there, she started getting, you know, loud. And so I'm like, okay, it's time mm, to go. Right. So my friend Nita trying to talk to her like, yo, you know, chill. You know, we, we all came together. We all <laughs> leaving together. You right. know, chill. You know, just like that. So we leave. And when we leave, we get in the car. And at the time, I had my blazer. So we leave. We get in the car. We comes, we um coming out. We going down um Belmont. Right, and you know, the streets up there is kind of narrow. Yeah. And it's a Walgreens on the corner, and up the street from the Walgreens, it's a Shell gas station. So we we coming out, and she in the car, and she pissed, like, you you rude, and I ain't never going out with you no more. I'm like, what did I do? Right. She, so she was upset. I said, all oh, because I spoke. So Nita was in the back, and Nita was laughing. Nita was like, Don is just a friendly person. Like, right. And when we was doing some promotion, well, do y'all need to do that shit on y'all a long time, woo, woo, woo. So we driving, and it was a, a, the gas station on the right-hand side. We came out. We driving down the street. Next thing I know, out of nowhere, she just smacked the shit out of me. My head went over, like, hit the hit the window. That's how wow. hard she hit me. My head hit the, um, hit the window, and it was like a moment of blackout where the car went up, and when I say we stopped about maybe an inch from the gas station, tank an inch oh my god from because the car because you know she hit me and i yeah. did like this oh, and so you were driving yeah i was driving but we went up in the gas station went up on the curb wow up on the curb into the gas station and i mean literally stopped right there by that thing nita was in the back like oh shit let me out of here so we right. get out because we we look and you know people it's up north in chicago it's right. in the it's in july in the summertime everybody came running right Everybody came running after they realized, of course, we didn't hit the fucking gas tank. <laughs> right. <laughs> but at first, when we was coming in there, they thought we was going to hit the gas tank because some people was there. And they said they ran because, it looked. I mean, we was just that close wow. to that gas tank. So we pulled out. When we got out, she got out the car. I went head on and took her home. I couldn't drive no more. You, I you couldn't. a good one. I let, I, let, I, let, I, let, I let Nita drive. No, I didn't hit her. 
I did not hit him. No, I wouldn't go hit it. I would have left her. But though. I would left. I was sitting there <laughs> and I was like, "Oh my god!" So after we set, if we was there for a good 30, 40 minutes. I couldn't drive no more. So oh, of course, Nita couldn't really drive, but she ended up driving. We dropped her off at home. Mm-hmm. As soon as we got back in that car, I called Sprint. I changed my number, and I never ever talked to that chick again. Yeah. She ended up popping up at my house trying to talk. I mean, when I say never, mm-hmm. I never talked to her again. You only get one time to put your hands on me. One time. She hit me that one time. It was a it was a done deal. It was over. And we had only been talking like some months, but it was over. Mm-hmm. It was like a done deal. Mm-hmm. And she kept on, well, um, I'm, you know, we didn't have all the internet and all of this going on. So mm-hmm. she was sending letters in the mail and cards <laughs> and trying to send flowers, talking about oh, how wow. sorry she was. Like, nah, bruh. like, nah, you, you get one time. Nah, one you almost time tried to kill me. Like, you lucky I didn't me. kill you. Like, and, that's how I feel. And I, I never, ever talked to her again. I, wow. I ran, I bumped into her some years later i bumped into one uh, bumped into her again and she she apologized and i said it's, it's fine i forgave you but mm. i learned my lesson it only took me one time right one time but and and i'm glad i did because for me that was a red flag because other women mm-hmm. who dated her after me like i ain't go blasting her right. i ain't say nothing but other people that she came in contact with after me the same thing wow. and this is a feminine woman that was mm-hmm. doing this so people need to also understand every time you're in a relationship of dangerous love, it's not always the, man the masculine. Or, yeah. is not, and in the heterosexual relationships, it's not always the man. Mm-mm. Women can be abusive and Absolutely. abuse men and be overly obsessed with them Right. as well. It's not always the masculine person that's doing it. But like I said, it took me that one Ooh time and i would it, it was a rap i was like never again and and, and i so because that was dangerous to me you yeah. damn near killed us so if right. you get that mad over people speaking to me mm-hmm. you that obsessed or that gone or whatever over people speaking to me like what's next nah, nah what's man. next it, it would have been the on site every time you i said, seen her you said you would have left <laughs> it, i would have left her and it would have been an on site every time i see uh, her my friend tried was to like kill that. me like it was like, nah, man. It was like <laughs> Man, you should. No. We should have beat her ass. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't worth yeah, it. Cause nah. the police was up there. Oh well, then, we yeah, up yeah. I'm not gonna go and, to jail in for that you. situation. Yeah, that makes sense. Being looking as the um, masculine one in the relationship. Oh well, yeah. For some reason, when the police show up. They always want to, you could be right, but they always want to take you because you look like a boy. Right. So they always assume you did something wrong right. and they're going to take you. So I, it wasn't, it yeah, was not worth it. It was like, okay, I'm going to take her, drop her back. And I, we ain't have Uber and Lyft or nothing, <laughs> else I would have left her. But we was way up north right. and she stayed no. way out in Country Club Hill. Some she would have had to pump it because I'm not, you're not getting back in the car. You just tried to kill me. So <laughs> I'm sorry. But um, yeah, that's crazy though. So, like I see I've never I've had a situation where somebody like hit me once and we ended up fighting though so ours is a little different situation um we ended up fighting the police were called and and the police actually I didn't want to press charges um because I wanted to finish the fight because I, I was just that mad but um the police this was in LA so you know how <laughs> LAPD get down but um I but we we weren't in like a relationship per se. We were kind of like in a situation ship type of deal. But I can't for the life of me put myself in that situation where I would consent to being in that type of cycle, like you were saying before, of just that codependency to me. Now, there's all types of codependency, um, like we were talking about. It doesn't always have to be physical, it could be emotional. Because I have, I was in an emotionally abusive relationship where it was a cycle and I stayed in it for way longer than I was supposed to. And I became an individual that I hope to never see again. So, uh, so that's interesting that you were talking about the codependency, the jealousy, obsession, like, and just the control. Mm-hmm. Cause I think that's kind of like what that is. is like, that well, person. I think, I, I think also, um, sometimes people just need to get clarity Mm -hmm. Uh, in a relationship especially i noticed in lesbian relationships they're very unbalanced a lot of times and Mm -hmm. with power struggle and people trying to decide who 
who wears the pants or whatever, right, <laughs> right, which is like really crazy. Sometimes you know somebody just needs to get that ass beat, and then you know, right, <laughs> <laughs> who wears the pants and who doesn't. <laughs> I'm just saying sometimes, which which is what happened in my relationship. Like we mm. just had to fight, right, <laughs> so that she could understand. I, right. you know, right. please do not let the freckles fool you, right, <laughs> but. I get it, but mm-hmm. I get it from from many different sides. And basically, if you're if you're in a relationship and it's abusive and you feel abused, mm-hmm. you feel unhappy and depressed, then you're in an abusive relationship. If you're in a relationship and y'all just be turned up all the time and y'all mm-hmm. both kind of get a thrill off of arguing and fussing and all of that, right? I mean, I don't know. Who's to say right. if that's abuse or not? I think abuse is determined by how you feel mm-hmm. um, or mm-hmm. how you are made to feel by the interaction that you have with that person. Right. I agree with that because I've been in a relationship. Like, I have a, you, most people can't tell this, but I have a smart mouth, a very smart mouth. Oh, yeah, girl. I'm sarcastic. Me too. So I've been in relationships where the other person was as well. So we would say things to each other, you know, we might let a bitch fly or mother, you know, every once in a while. So on the outside looking in, if you look at that, you see how we talk to each other, you're thinking, oh, that's disrespectful. You guys are being abusive to each other when it's like, no, that's just how we communicate with each other. Like this person knows that, you know, what we're saying is not a relative, you know, uh, a mirror image of how we feel about each other. But now Mm -hmm. let's let's check ourselves in this moment. Yeah. We're both poets. Mm hmm. And we understand the power of words. We do. Yes. Okay. So even when you give someone a pass mm-hmm. to call you a bitch or, or to call you a blonde whore <laughs> when you're having sex or mm-hmm. when, you know what I'm saying? Like you may have, are those words still like shards of glass? Are, do they still cut? Do they still have the same meaning? Mm-hmm. Um, And the same effect, ultimately. Mm. Well, I would think so, yes. Because one, uh, um, and I had a discussion with somebody about this recently. Like, my relationship with the word bitch is, like, really weird. Because it's, like, certain people, when it's said, I I don't have a problem with it. It doesn't cut. It's just, like, whatever. Whereas, like, in other situations, like, maybe in the bedroom, I was trying, we were talking about, like, stuff that said, like, to me, I can't fathom saying the word bitch in the bedroom and it be anything other than something bad. But that's because of my experience with that word. So if somebody, if we're in the bedroom, we're doing things and they say, they call me a bitch, I'm like, hold on. Like, that that would cause me to pause. Be like, what? Like, who, where did that come from? Same thing with whore. Like, that word, I, I would wonder, like, okay, what placement does that have here? So I understand what you're saying that. Now, in other situations... If I'm, you know, going back and forth with somebody, if we're having an argument, we're talking about each other, and we're just kind of sparring, you know, in that way, being called those words wouldn't bother me at all because I know we're sparring. Mm. Now, see, yeah, I'm the opposite. Of... We, we <laughs> might be able to say some stuff in the bedroom, but mm. if we just in the kitchen cooking, oh, well, and you're <laughs> like, oh, bitch, I'm like, oh, what? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like no, nah, it's not a term of endearment for me. It's mm. a naughty. It, oh, I, it can okay. be used more. Are you a Scorpio? No, I'm no, actually a Gemini. A Gemini. So oh. I'm, I'm weird with words. So, so oh, maybe no, that's just why. But it has nothing to do with what I'm saying. I don't know why I asked you that. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, uh, it, to to curse at at someone that I love, if it's not used. In a way that is almost theatrical, mm-hmm. I'm not really having it. Oh, okay. I don't really do that. Not even with my friends. Like mm-hmm. most of my friends will tell you, we will not be just having casual conversations. Oh, yeah. And I'm the one oh, that's I like, like that. "What up, bitch?" bitch this. Yeah. I will see. Yeah. It. So, uh, like I said, with certain people, even even uh, yeah. let, me, let me just throw this up because we're gonna have to go to a weird place for a second mm-hmm. that may disturb Don, but I have to say this. I recently started watching that, or I I wa- I, I binged um, that Insecurity show. Have you seen? Oh that? yeah, I like Insecurity. Insecure. Yeah, yeah. Insecure. Insecure. What Issa Rae? Yeah. Insecure. Yes. Okay. They do use the word bitch. Very. I had to like get through the first few <laughs> yeah, episodes. They use it quite oh, a bit. Oh wait, they made a web okay. series off of that. 
It's a series. It was based off. Of, well, movie. it's an HBO, but it came off of her web series, Aqua Black Girl. Uh, um, I, she I, I thought you was talking about the movie because I seen the movie Insecure, but I didn't know it was a web series. No, there's too. a no. It's this a is an HBO show. show. Oh, no, show. I yeah, see the TV show. it's a TV show. So, um, yeah, so it's these for people who don't know. It's a great show. You should it watch is. it. Um, Issa Rae is amazing. She is awesome and so transparent. Mm -hmm. Um, as as are her her fellow cast members. I think it's an awesome show. I did have to get past the casual use yeah. of certain <laughs> words, which was really interesting. In a recent episode, I was watching. Um, speaking of what is abuse and mm. what is not abuse and what is um perception mm -hmm. it you you had a uh, recently miss nightlife here of course yeah. i remember one of the lines of one of her pieces is um a great line mm -hmm. uh, perception is reality mm -hmm. perception is reality and which is kind of like what i was talking about like if you give somebody a pass to choke you out a little bit i mean is that abuse Mm -hmm. Or not, it's all in how you, you perceive something. So watching this TV show, the main character had gone to one of those sex workshops. Yeah. And she learned how to give head, mm -hmm. like, really well, I guess. And so she's giving head to her boyfriend. And um, he's just, like, amazed by it. <laughs> and he lets one go in her eye. Oh. <laughs> and she is mortified. Ooh. <laughs> And it's HBO, so you know they show it. Oh, <laughs> it's like, God. And I'm sitting there looking like, okay. <laughs> in my book, that would have been the ultimate dirty, euphoric, right, okay. sexually euphoric high kind of thing. Like, mm -hmm. we went there to this place, you know, that is, like, really intense. And what, you know, would I be worried about what it means? No. Mm -hmm. But in this case, she was. And I think. It was just a very interesting um, feeling that it gave me mm -hmm. because they were already talking about black women and whether they um, go down and why they don't go down. And right. it was interesting that she took that act like she pulled it out of him literally and mm -hmm. then got mad when he <laughs> about where. And so I just thought, wow, this is really interesting when you talk about what is perception mm -hmm. Um, and how you look at certain things. And the way she took it was like you treated me like a whore, like you treated me like Right, you know, I'm doing this horrible thing, so you have to be very clear. Mm -hmm. I learned this from Dr. Nairobi, she yeah. does our BDSM <laughs> demonstrations. Yeah. Like, you have to be very clear on your intent, mm -hmm. and you have to be clear on um, from from the from the subs position. You have to be very clear right. with people about what your boundaries are as well. Got it. You know, and and that's also in conversation with your friends. Mm -hmm. Like if certain words make you feel bad, right? You know, I mean, I think it's easy to practice great words. Yeah, you could. <laughs> I could say bless you. And make it sound, make it feel like fuck you, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> if I put the inflections in the right place, right, you right, know what I'm <laughs> right, right. Yeah, like how in the south they say bless your heart, and it generally does not mean bless your heart. Bless. <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> right. <laughs> so, so yeah, that that makes sense on that. So that to be more um, thoughtful of your words and everything like that, because I because I do. And and I feel like it's a hypocritical thing on my part, especially with that word bitch and everything, how I use it, because like I said, for certain people, it's okay. Others, it's not. So I have to figure out to myself, okay, so why is it okay for this subsection to say it, but not this? And I think it's the same thing with the word, with the N word. Like, you know, it's okay if certain people say it, but if this group of people say it, then it's a big problem. So mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of one of those, it's you know, so hip weird. hypocritical, like, <laughs> yes, weird things. Um weird. So but weird. to kind of go into that, that that's an interesting point. And I remember that episode, too, where it's like the, like how black women don't like doing this. And so she was kind of like going against that stigma. Like, you know, I'm going to be the best at it because, you know, mm -hmm. I'm not going to let that define me. Mm -hmm. However, like you said, when he, you know, you brought this out of him. So when he, you know, came like that. Then all of a sudden, those stereo those feelings that you had before came rushing back to you. So you're like, oh, mm -hmm. came you're rushing just back to her. But yeah, well, not I mean, to him. him. Yeah, not to so him, but he, to her. Like <laughs> he was just on the high she was giving him. Right. He's just responding, literally, mm -hmm. physically responding to what she's giving him, and then she internalizes it and mm -hmm. turns it into something else. Right. In her own mind. 
right? Right. Yeah. Yeah, so, so yeah, a lot of people would do that because, like you said, being clear about boundaries, mm-hmm. what's okay and what's not okay, mm-hmm. having those talks, like mm-hmm. we said last shows, like having that communication to be like, mm-hmm. okay, well, this is this is what I like, this is what I don't like, mm-hmm. you know, these are the lines here that I have. Mm-hmm. Uh, and everything, I think, is a key point because with jealousy, like, Don, back to your story, okay, well, if, had she had a conversation with you and say, okay, well, I actually have feelings about, you know, being with somebody who's extra friendly, that could have been a red flag well before the slap and been like, okay, well, I'm a friendly person, you don't like friendly people, so maybe we are not compatible together because I don't, you know, I don't allow people to control that aspect of me, whereas that's what you're about. So, that could have been a red flag, but because she didn't communicate, her way of communicating was to slap you. Like that's right. That's how but people that get into my, those situations. That yeah, kind of like for me, um, because it started off as you know at the beginning, mm-hmm. and I should have took heed to it when it first started. Mm-hmm. But you know how first time when people get a little jealous and you think, oh, it's cute, she just like me, like what yeah. Jessica was saying earlier. So the first couple of times, it was like I pretty much was blowing it off oh, okay. because I didn't see the extent of it. I didn't know that she was controlling to the point where you mind, you can't speak to nobody, don't you yeah. look at nobody. But it was situations that happened prior to, but like I said, I just, you know how you overlook red yeah, flags. I course. just overlook like, oh, okay, cool, whatever. Right. It's nothing. We at the restaurant, she get mad because I smile at the waitress, so she want another waitress. It, it was like little, little stuff like that that I should have took heed to, or mm-hmm. we just end up, le- we end up leaving that restaurant that day because she accused me of flirting with the um, the waitress. Oh, wow. So I should have, at that moment, been like, okay, this is too much for me. But I continue to, you know, I continue right. to talk to her, and during that time when it happened, I was really new, really new to the dating, to um, dating or whatever, because mm-hmm. I came out of a 10-year relationship and went right into, like, a 7-year relationship. Oh, okay. So I was, like, really new, <laughs> new to, to the dating. So during that time, it was a lot of stuff that I accepted because I didn't know, because in my 20s where most people experience dating and they go through right. different things, I was in a relationship from 21 to 31. So, oh, okay. So... Then coming out of that and trying to date, it was like, girl, it's a whole new world. Yeah, it was a here. whole, it was a whole new, new, new <laughs> world. But I, I learned quickly <laughs> from that. But for some reason, in the beginning, I kept getting these women that would be obsessive, controlling, or jealous hearted. It was even um, another incident that occurred. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was saying to myself, I don't know if it's just with women in Chicago, but <laughs> <laughs> but are the women in Chicago crazy? <laughs> We're like, what's going on? Because I was at this this young lady's house, and she didn't want me to leave. And I'm like, um, I gotta leave. I want to go home. So she has my shoes. What? She lots of she lot. And I was and, and, and see, and I'm like this. I never go anywhere without a friend. Right. <laughs> I'm always taking somebody with me. Right. So at that time, I had my friend Tammy with me. Mm-hmm. So I was like, Tammy, you got to come. And then, you know, I did that. She didn't really like the girlfriend, but I did that like she got a friend. She was like, but she ain't cute. I was like, it don't matter. We all going out together because <laughs> I'm not going Need by back myself. Up. Yeah. <laughs> so it was at that point where. Um, because this was after the slap incident. Mm. So I was like, I'm not going out with another woman no, by myself. No. <laughs> so she invites us over to her house. She cooking and she going to cook dinner, watch a movie. She didn't want me to leave. She has my shoes. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> like, you have my shoes. The other chick slapped me. Like, wow. And I'm like, okay, okay. So I'm got to give. So I was like, okay, maybe I'm being a little too passive. Maybe I need the man to fuck up or some <laughs> shit. Because this shit is crazy. Because, I, you know, I started to wonder, like, am I doing something? Because for a long time. But I mean, it was like this spell where every time I kept getting with people, they was mm. like really controlling, just like, okay, mm. you with me, you with me. And like, again, I was saying, I was just coming out of a relationship and I was not ready, really ready for another one. But she had my shoes. It was raining outside. Wow. But you know, when she went and helped, she went to use the bathroom, you know, <laughs> I seen those keys. I got those keys. I didn't find my shoes and it was raining outside. So I walked outside barefoot. 
Wow. You know, I had on my socks. They was muddy. And I got <laughs> home and I drove all the way again from the north side back to the to the <laughs> over to Lakeshore Drive to the south side wow. barefoot with no shoes on. Tammy laughed the whole day away <laughs> there. But I, <laughs> but I didn't care because she did not want me. She didn't want me to leave. And, and hers had came to a point, and it's a difference um, between love, loving mm-hmm. somebody, mm-hmm. and being obsessed with somebody. Right. I don't know what the first person issue was. I think her issue was just, I don't know, controlling. I have no idea. I didn't stick That's around to find like. out. Um, with this young lady, it was more of an obsession. Mm-hmm. Um, I felt like with her, she kept saying, I love you. I love you. Like, you ain't, you, you only know me two months. You barely uh-huh. know anything about me to even tell me that you, you love me or whatever. But she came to Club Intimates. Oh, I miss Club Intimates. That was like <laughs> the number one spot in Chicago. She came to Club Intimates, and I'm dancing on the floor. She throws my shoes at me on the floor. <gasps> then she wants what? to fight the young lady that I'm dancing with. Like, she didn't try to fight me. She she threw the shoes. And, of course, the, the person that I was dancing with at the time was like, what the fuck? What, this right. this crazy bitch? So she... <laughs> She ended up getting kicked out the club and borrowed from the club, though. Wow. But then she kept coming to the club. She couldn't get in the club, <laughs> but she'll hang outside the club or what? she'll hang in the parking lot. And I'm like, okay, I can't go oh, up here God. for, yeah, she, yeah. I was <laughs> like, oh, my Jesus, what am I doing? What wow. am I doing? So I took a break for a minute. I was like, <laughs> yeah, okay, I think I would too. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going I'm, I'm to take a break. I, I end up talking, but it was at a point where I was like, okay, I'm not going to date nobody because I don't know if it's something I'm doing wrong to right. attract these crazy women because she wasn't the only one. It was just like a whole line of crazy women. Mm. I had one, um, I think, no, that was the same one. She was trying to be friends with, they would try to befriend my sister. She was trying to be like real cool with my sister. You want right. to go out, out to eat? We in the club, buy my sister. My cousin used to hang out with me. So she buying everybody drinks and everything. Like, uh-huh. And I'm like, I don't want her. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I'm I'm a, I'm a I'm going to take a, a a break for a minute. And then, you know, I got into some other, it was just, I don't know, just then I said, okay, I'm tired. I'm just going to be single. But I still continue to date for those. Mm-hmm. Then I took a break. Then I started back dating. But like I said, I always found myself in situation with um, women who always wanted to control. And maybe it's a lesbian thing. It go back to what... Um, to what Jessica was saying mm-hmm. about people being confused on who's supposed to be who. And for me, and I would always tell people up front, I am a lesbian. Mm-hmm. I am a woman who loves women. I'm not a man. You not a, I, you, <laughs> I don't I don't date studs or anything. <laughs> but a lot of people get confused and they don't understand the basic of a relationship mm-hmm. of a lesbian. It's simple. You are a woman who loves another woman. All this other stud, top, bottom, all that. I didn't know any of that until I was in my 40s. Mm. Because when I was in my 10-year relationship, she was a woman, I was a woman. It was no, <laughs> she the man or I'm the man. We was both mm-hmm. women or whatever, you know. I don't wear dresses or anything like that. You know, I feel more comfortable in unisex or male attire. Mm. But again, it's a woman who love women. And a lot of the... um issues with the control the jealousy and i believe it came again because people looking for they place in a relationship they don't they don't know or most um feminine women think if you too lax for them then you're not hard enough for them so they can control you Ooh, i had an argument with a femme that was like that because the question was posed to like you know what type of uh, women do you like and things like that and I, I express like just you know women like I don't have like there's not a label issue for me and her thing was nah if you a stud and you like this and you ain't no real stud I'm like see that's you living in that heteronormative and, exactly. and trying to feed into that which is not necessary now if you just prefer a partner that is a certain way say that right, more but nice. don't generalize and make everybody seem like oh well you're not enough or you're not this because they're not something that you enjoy Right, and I tell and she you gave all me a man, lot right. of flack for that. Wait a minute, you right. a stud? No, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> no, but we were. No, I'm like far removed from it. No, but we were just having that discussion because we were both on a radio show, actually, and um, she, we were talking about that whole dynamic, and I'm like, well. It, uh, I say that that's what you prefer A woman like this Don't be like well if you're a stud and you're not this Then you're not a stud to me you're, You might as well be a femme like that I thought it was like very close minded To be like it's black and white I'm a stud 
Right, yes, but that you is, can be. You can that be is, though. <laughs> but that is the issue with the, the the control part or whatever. People get into relationships and instead of accepting that person for who they are, they try right. to change them and they say, Okay, you have to be a stud because you look this way. Right. And I tell people <laughs> all the time, just because my hair low and I wear boy clothes, I do not identify as a stud. Mm-hmm. Well, okay. The thing is the fact that you guys have shifted to a conversation about stud or what is masculine. Are we suggesting that if you are masculine, you, you're you expected to have a certain amount of violence in you? Is that what you guys are saying? No. Well, I think basically, so some yes. people, some yes. people feel, like, yeah, that if the, um, yeah. To some, yes. To, to a certain extent, yeah. Why? Because you most have more people, testosterone or something? No, because that goes back to what I said earlier. If you have a controlling a feminine woman can be super controlling they could be obsessive they could be jealous hearted um in a heterosexual relationship they could be giving a man hell and i'm talking about a man a heterosexual not lesbian a heterosexual because i had this happen to a friend of mine his woman would give him hell it was like she was okay with me being friends with him because she's like oh She's she's a lesbian, so she was okay with him being friends with me, mm-hmm. but he couldn't have no other any um female friends. He and then some of his other friends she questioned, but it was to the point where she was like super obsessed with him. Like he would go out and she would be like sitting in the parking lot and doing crazy stuff. So they would get into it. He and she had she had stretched his face up. She up. She had flattened his car tires and everything. So it was the one incident where he got tired. And all he did was slap her. She just had a red, like, handprint on the side of her face. He went to jail. Because, again, when you, when when um, everybody look at it like that, they always feel that in any relationship where it's controlling, jealousy, or anything like that, that is always the masculine identified person, whether it be a heterosexual relationship or a same-sex relationship, they always assume that the feminine person is not strong enough. They are the weaker person in the relationship, so they are not capable of that type of malice, but they are. But mm-hmm. the police, unfortunately, profile you that way because when they came to that situation, they arrested him, but she was she was in the wrong, and he was like, look, look what she, look what she did to my car. Look what, and, and she still... They still took him. Because those are material things, and he hit her face. Mm-hmm. That was poor this judgment. This woman, <laughs> and cut this dude, so. marked up his face, did everything. He got tired, and I'm sorry, but he had every right to slap her <laughs> ass. <laughs> no. Well, I guess because the material things can be, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Beyonce, little sister. <laughs> yeah, you have to get the sister or something. But, yeah, I think um, in, in the community, it is often felt that generally when there's, like, uh, the power struggle, the more masculine, the more dominant one is the more Same. aggressive one. So naturally, the more violent one and things like that. So whenever you hear about those instances of uh, domestic abuse mm-hmm. within the community, you can a lot of people assume that it's yeah, right. always the it's not when it's actually not uh, a large percentage of the time. But um, a lot of people, at least from some of the ones that I've met, uh, we get into arguments because it's like I know some that are really extra aggressive and can be violent. Right. And we have this discussion like, OK, so I understand you don't want to be a man. I get that. And you're taking these masculine, um, you know, kind of like features and mannerisms. Like, why would you take the violent aspect of it as well? Like, why do you feel the need to take on that? I have to be the protector, the dominant one. I have to dominate over you. And if you buck against that, then I need to be violent with you. Why do you feel the need to do that? I think that people are misguided about what is masculine, what is feminine, because, well, I know a lot of lesbians Mm -hmm. that I've met as of late, (laughs) (laughs) I don't know, um, don't really deal with men, so they don't really know. So you have all these quote unquote stud type people Mm -hmm. running around acting the way that they think men act and they don't really know men they right. don't have a father right. they don't re- they don't really know right they just know the stereotype the same way that these 
young men are are dressing and acting like what they think women are like but they right. are way more woman than any woman i know <laughs> right you know what I mean? it's like it's so animated and right. crazy perception of, of what, what people, womanhood is yeah right, the same thing of of what manhood is see men confident um confident especially confident educated successful men mm-hmm don't typically resort to popping a female in the mouth. Like it's right. way beneath them. Mm-hmm. Like a confident um, man who's solid in his position as a man is not going to tolerate certain behavior. Like all that uh, stuff that we see on the on the Maury Povich show oh, yeah. and all that type of behavior. Who did that in? <laughs> that is not the standard for behavior. No. We... we as a community need to be more aware and I mean as the American community right. needs to be more aware of what is reality mm-hmm. and what is fiction. Right. What people are selling you for entertainment mm-hmm. and how people really live. Right. Like when I when I met Don I was telling her I'm I don't really do like all of that. Like I don't. Mm-hmm. I wanna be calm. I wanna be peace. I want to enjoy my last days on this earth. I don't have time <laughs> for the drama. Right. There was a time when I was young, you know, I, I didn't know better and mm-hmm. I subscribed to certain roles and and all of that. Right. Um, where I allowed uh, people to be dominant mm-hmm. over me, but fully aware that I was doing it right. and for my own reasons. I was doing it, a trade agreement in my mind Mm -hmm. for things that I wanted. Everyone does that. People just don't admit it. People just don't talk about it. They pretend. We pretend a lot, especially Mm -hmm. when you're talking about women. And I don't mean (laughs) lesbians. I mean women. Women play tea party all the time. We grow up pretending. Mm -hmm. That's true. They give little boys trucks and building blocks so that they can do real things definitive things scientific things Mm -hmm. they give girls baby dolls and empty teacups and barbie Mm -hmm. right (laughs) and tell us to to live a fantasy and you grow up with a you know walking around with somebody else's hair on and Mm -hmm. a bunch of makeup on on our faces and clothes that barely fit just to try to fit into a, a image of something that doesn't exist in nature. Mm-hmm. We literally go against our own nature all the time mm-hmm. as females and then require society to accept that. <laughs> to accept us as serious. Mm-hmm. How can you take someone serious when they are walking around in drag? Un. In, <laughs> insecure. Y'all ain't see my face. I thought I cut off the radio. No, I'm no. live, but it ain't no y'all listening uh, space to me. Okay. In, insecure. Mm-hmm. But they right, can still hear y'all. About who we are naturally mm-hmm. walking around in disguise saying, listen to me, trust me, value me. Mm-hmm. You see? Right. And it's almost That's like you Jessica don't value talking yourself. Right like, like you said, putting on that perception is reality. Perception so is reality. Me, yeah. So you want me to accept you and value you for your worth. And you're mm-hmm. telling me you aren't confident enough with who you are naturally mm-hmm. to walk around in yourself. You have to walk around in someone else. Mm-hmm. And I'm supposed to trust you and value you and put my life and my children's lives in your hands and mm-hmm. take you seriously. So to combat that, you have these other women who say, well, we, you'll take us seriously if we're if we're like men. Right. Not realizing you're still doing the same thing. <laughs> you're putting on somebody else's Where's face, somebody else's attitude. Right. Why can't you just be a strong woman? Right. Why do you have to be a masculine identified woman? What the fuck <laughs> is that? That's not even a thing. All the women who raised me, who took care of me and made sure that I became a, a healthy adult were strong women. Mm-hmm. I don't even know if they were straight or gay. Like they were, they were, <laughs> I, mean, I don't even were. know. It didn't even matter because right. they were just strong black women. That's all I was used to my whole mm-hmm. life. 
So when people start putting labels on it, and I didn't even start really getting all these labels. Oh, shit. Until <laughs> I got to Atlanta. Right. Oh, yeah. Like, Atlanta. really, like, people doing all this I'm stuff. Sorry, but to me, it's all the same thing. Mm-hmm. It's tea party. It's a game of tea party. And and a lot of this is not even my own thinking all by myself. Mm-hmm. I, I was actually recently on a, a blog. This guy, I'm um, sorry, I cannot think of his name, but he wrote this um, response on somebody else's blog. And mm-hmm. he was saying, I don't trust women. He said, mm-hmm. women are not, you know, trustworthy. Women will Why? use. We don't know who they, they are because we don't know. Because women. Because we don't know who we are. Right. And we don't know what we might do. They mm-hmm. said, there's a saying about it. It's a woman's prerogative to change her yes, mind. I yeah. <laughs> How can you build anything on that? Right. You might change your mind. You might change your mind. <laughs> What is that? (laughs) You might change your mind. And it's true. It's how we're wired, you know. But when we talk about heteronormative, Mm -hmm. um, the the heteronormative construct of this society, you have to understand where that is coming from. And Mm -hmm. that is coming from the true nature of who we are as people, men who build, Mm -hmm. who give you homes, the masculine gives you dwellings and takes care of the family and makes sure that everything is okay the female the nurturer this mm-hmm. is coming from nature right this is not um you know when when things are skewed they usually become askew because of society and the requirements that society puts on you on top of what you have naturally you know what i'm saying right in your natural state when you can provide whatever god has given the earth for your family right that's a natural but when you create systems like uh, capitalism and then right. expect people to aspire and put all these boundaries and prisons and stack <laughs> all this shit up on top of right. it, then you have stresses. Those stresses lead to a motherfucker knocking you out. Right. <laughs> Pretty much. You, you know what I'm saying? Right. It's, it's all the other stuff mm-hmm. that confuses things. But in our nature, there is, there is the nurturer mm-hmm. and there is the provider. Right. Period. Now, if two women decide to get together, then whoever is the best nurturer and whoever is the best provider, provider. that's how it is. Right. You, you understand what I'm saying? But I'm it's not saying. about putting on somebody else's personality. To do so. To, yeah. to do what needs to be done. Right. To keep a family together. Exactly. To, you know what I'm saying? And, and I feel like, and, I, and that, like I said, that kind of goes back to where we're what? dealing with the labels and, and that sense of control because there are people out here who feel like, okay, well, if I'm the provider, if I'm the protector, then I am the controller of things. So I get to work the ass. Right. So I get to, (laughs) you know what I'm saying? I get to assert that because if you don't, you know, allow me to do this or if you go against that, then, because I've actually had a stud tell me that they were like, because you're so strong and secure in what you do, you're emasculating to a lot of studs so that's why there's a lot of them that won't even talk to you because because you're so much secure in in what you do you're emasculating so and and i I thought that was such a weird statement and concept to make because i'm like how can i emasculate you it's it's, control it's because people are buying into this um, control idea that women are helpless in some type of way Mm -hmm. and what's interesting is that we know we know yeah. Is, is um, at least the strong women of our society understand that even without men we would thrive. Right. We understand what we really do to keep to keep our communities together, to keep food on our children's back, particularly for African American women um, survivors of slavery. Mm-hmm. We know that we are who we rely on. Right. And unfortunately, a lot of men are just used as sperm donors these days. Like we, women are opting not to get married and not to rely on people because sometimes you know you put your faith in someone and they cannot deliver Mm -hmm. when you could have spent years putting your faith in yourself right putting your faith in your own skills therefore we have to operate on a a more even playing field understanding especially for two women to be in a relationship together you both bring your strengths Mm -hmm. and you balance each other uh if there are weaknesses that one person has you look for someone who who has those if you know, I don't 
need to date another short person if I want to be able to reach the top shelf. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, yeah, I get it. Yeah. I can't date another tall person. I just I'm being I, simple with it, but you I, yeah, what I know I'm what saying, you mean. Yeah, like right. You want to find somebody that, balance. that balances intimidation. You. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now that was from Tina. She said intimidation. They are intimidated by a strong woman. Mm -hmm. So some people are intimidated um, by strong women. Uh, Monet says she's a natural nurturer. Oh, um, hi Monet. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, thank you. It's a very controversial piece that actually um, Love the Poet does much yeah. better than I. <laughs> but <laughs> she does uh, a great Monet job. Again said, yes. I'm sorry, I should be over here. Monet again said, yes, um, Je speak, Jessica. I think that's why I'm currently single. Um, she was talking about, back about when you was talking about, I don't even know, because I'm all late with, with reading these, because I don't really do live, <laughs> but I kept just getting hit up with them asking, like, go live, go live, go live, because I usually don't do live, but they kept asking to go live. They wanted to see. So that's why I'm on live right now, and um, I'm trying to, um, Tina said, let's see what Tina said. Let me take this out of there. Tina said, they can manipulate you the way they can a weaker woman. A lot of women truly don't know their worth. Mm. This is true. A, a good oh. girlfriend of mine, the one who does your um, bar stew fantasies and cocktails, DJ Blackman, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. talks about that. She has a book called In Search of Worthiness that mm. is about understanding even the difference between value and worth. Right. And, um, you know, you, you may have a value mm -hmm. to someone, but that might not be what you are worth. Right. Right. You, you understand what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I understand what she's saying right. about that. Yeah. So uh, I think the problem just just stems from women just not i'm sorry y'all <laughs> now i was telling them i'm sorry i almost canceled i almost canceled the live i am so <laughs> i am horrible at this live thing but i was trying to you know give you all our supporters what they want they ask every week mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. if we could go go live y'all could again i am on the live right now so you could Post your comments on there, or if you want to call in and talk to us, it's 312-715-8219. You could chime in. Yeah, I know we got a little bit off a of topic, but y'all know that's what women do. <laughs> I was going <laughs> to try and bring it back. I was going to try and bring it back. Yeah, we the supposed to be like, talking well, no, about dangerous yeah, yeah, uh, love and I, control. <laughs> and, and yes, you did go back to it, I'm Jess. going back to yeah, it. I'm going back so to it. So she going back to it. So we, we talking about jealousy, control, and, and obsession, um, obsession yeah. is what we're talking about. Like, um, and I guess I want to pose this question, like, how do you know? Like when I was saying earlier, I overlooked. How do you know when a little bit is just a little or if it's too much? Like obsession. Because, mm -hmm. lo again, love and obsession is two, they two totally different things. Right. Like love and lust is two totally different thing, right. things. Um, but how do you know? Because most people typically when you start off, they're a little jealous. You'd be like, oh, that's cute. But how do you know when it's, when too, it's much. too much? Yeah. You could feel it. Yeah. You could feel it, and where you can't feel it, sometimes you'll be blinded because... Okay, I'm confused, but I guess she probably was talking about something you just said, Jessica. They said, unfortunately, the civil rights movement left AA females behind. Um, uh, <laughs> I don't no, know. I don't agree with that at all. I don't know. I, Brooklyn Roslyn just said that, but I don't, I don't know what that was in reference to. Um, I, I'm not I don't sure know. what it's in reference to, but just taking it at face value, I have to say say um black women are probably some of the most successful americans there are like we um, we haven't really allowed the boundaries to um define us completely maybe there are large portions of, of us who have entrusted ourselves and our lives get uncomfortable and our families to men don't provide for us mm -hmm. but that comes from like we oh, have shit. to we have to um start trusting ourselves and trusting our other black women in our families and in our community more and, and that's what i was about to say mm -hmm. women one, one of the problems that the women have you ever see like, like in the movies guys could fight and then they'll just go have a beer together yeah and see, women are like that women uh, nah, are, we hold grudges our nature is grudgy and unsupportive is so bad it's almost like we're wired that way so that we can um, 
like, like a, a competition. A man or something. Yeah, it felt like you're in competition. Uh-huh. Like in those like family relationships where like the mom is competing with the daughter or yeah. something like that. Like I, that to me is mind blowing. Yeah, like, but it, you had that in relationships too, and yeah. that's where some of the jealousy see, come in because you, you could to... be in a relationship, and a lot of people don't realize this. Because I've experienced that as well. And that's why I took those six years to myself. And I was mm. almost to the point because I was like, God, why me? Why? <laughs> why? Right. These crazy women. But, yeah, you could be in a relationship, in a relationship with a woman and have your person, that person that you're in a relationship competing with you. They jealous of you, but they're in a relationship with you and they mm. competing competing against you and and i had that situation and i'm like why are you why are you competing with me i'm like i'm i it was like the very uncomfortable Mm -hmm. first of all because you looking at me first of all i don't even wear heels i don't wear skirt i don't (laughs) even wear makeup i don't do none of that so why are you competing with me but or the jealousy of like oh you need to dress down like i need to dress down to make you feel better about yourself so it happens in relationships mm-hmm. and and because we are women so you could be and that's it and it's oh my god but see that's that's really for for the uninvolved un- unevolved person mm-hmm. like once you get older, yeah. hopefully. Yeah, <laughs> stuff like that don't matter. But I don't know, because she should have known better. She was a 40-year-old woman. She should have known better. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But the competition, <laughs> the the competition between women, of course, is, is horrible. But then there's also just the... Uh, Jennifer was asking our qu- answering our question. She um again, this is from Facebook Live. She said, "How do you know when enough is too much? Um, you start to get uncomfortable." And that was from Jennifer on um, the live. She about jealousy and stuff. She said, "You start to get uncomfortable mm-hmm. in the situation." Yeah, I think you could feel it. It feels creepy. Right. It has a creepy kind of feeling. Like, mm, like oh, mm, there are moments where you're like, mm. Mm, I don't know. And, and <laughs> right. So for all the things that women are not given like upper body strength and such things, we are given certain things that we need to rely on more. And one of those is your intuition. Absolutely. Your intuition yeah. tells you Absolutely. when you are in danger, your body but tells we stay. you. <laughs> we defy our bodies. Right. We go against what our bodies tell us every day. Mm. If you wake up in a house with someone and you're sick mm. to your stomach, if you feel nervous or anxiety right walking on eggshells walking on eggshells if you i remember i was in this relationship where every time i will fly you know i travel a lot right every time i get on the plane headed back home i would get anxiety in my stomach Mm. because i knew we were gonna be fighting it was just horrible Mm -hmm. and i remember my friend kino telling me jessica listen to your body Mm. And how, how important that was and how I could have changed so many things, like literally erased like some years of pain mm-hmm. if I had just listened right. to my body. Um, you also, if, if you're lucky enough to have wise women mm. in your lives, a lot of times like in this society, they um, have. See, that's one thing I have to say about these images that we keep putting out here of mm-hmm. black women. Like, a lot of people think of Medea as a woman. Yeah, no. Medea is not. <laughs> yeah, <a> no. <laughs> Medea is not a woman. And I think it's important that we understand what, what um, a matriarch mm-hmm. looks and sounds like versus what these images are, these, these men that keep putting in dresses and parading in front of us like entertainment. Our matriarchs of our society have life lessons for you. Mm -hmm. And it is important that we don't just um, let them sit in in old folks' homes and not have a chance to speak to us, to guide the family, our our unified family. We we, we don't, um, it's almost like, I don't know, like we stopped creating leaders. Mm-hmm. We stop looking and listening mm-hmm. um, to the voices that we we need to, but the answers are there. Uh, these are our living ancestors. Right. You know, you have to listen. You have to feel like you can go 
um, to them for advice to get through a situation and, and trust that they have your best interest at heart. Right. Um, I don't think we've changed that much. Mm. You know, we still we still have the power to build the community that we want. Mm -hmm. We still have the power to guide our sisters and brothers out of bad situations. You right. know, uh, a lot of times you'll have a family who knows that they have a sister or a cousin or a niece in an abusive relationship mm -hmm. and won't do anything to help. Right. Or they'll encourage the relationship because of what that person may provide. Sometimes sex will keep you, good sex will keep you in a, a toxic relationship. And I was in one of those people. Like I stayed with some, it was a toxic relationship. But once I cut off the, um, once I cut off the sex and then, like I said, because she kept pissing me off, then I started to see, but I had, I started to see for myself. And a lot of times if you think you love somebody, because you are getting confused in lust with love. If you think you love somebody or you're emotionally tied to someone and you have third parties telling you stuff, you tend to not want to listen. And I've also been on that end where I've had a friend in a toxic relationship. And if you try to tell them it's a to toxic relationship, then they don't want to be friends with you or they won't don't want to talk to you because I lost the friendship behind behind that, trying to help somebody get out of a toxic um relationship but when i say that shit was toxic it was like violent like you got a black eye now i gotta come to the hospital i gotta take you to the hospital your arm is broke okay well if you're not gonna get out of this i'm not gonna keep witnessing this um type situation and she ended up not talking to me no more she ended up not talking to me no more but she eventually got out of that toxic relationship but it took her another about five years but in the course of that five years she isolated herself from family her friends I mean that one person that um one person became her like her whole world she just isolated isolated everybody and this was a heterosexual relationship this was not led this was a heterosexual relationship during the time when I was in the service and she just um you know she didn't want to talk to us anymore and I was just like she just started cutting everybody off but yeah so I don't know what happened to her. Words, the Bible says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God mm -hmm. and the word was God. Mm -hmm. That is really important, like really important to understand that words, the words you say, the words you hear, the words you receive from other people. Can y'all hear her? Yeah. Become, no, I'm sorry, I was asking the lie. Okay. Become as God to you. They become the truth. Right. So if someone says to you, you're ugly or you're stupid, mm -hmm. those words resonate with you. Uh, that's why you speak a certain way to your children because you don't want them growing up believing all these things right. and they're becoming a menace to society. So the same way that, that we're learning as a culture, as a, the world culture, mm -hmm. is learning that bullying is wrong. Right. We have to evolve as humans like we are no longer these base people who can't get through a situation without hurting each other we're supposed to be able to communicate right. through anything especially if we love each other absolutely speaking yeah. life into your partner you definitely as opposed to, to destruction that. so and you just pointed on some yeah when you were stick and you was just talking about how like if you calling your child stupid all the time, they grow up believing they stupid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they may not be stupid, but they gonna grow up believing they stupid because you call them stupid. And that's the same thing, um, same thing in, in relationships. Sometimes uh, people don't realize this, but being in relationships when at a young age and in some relationships, they still, they, they um, mold you into thinking or believing mm -hmm. certain things that may not be, um, that may not be true. It may not be true about you. Right. Like um, my very, very first relationship, she was 10 years older than me. And she was the one who kept saying, you're the, you are a boy, you are a boy, you are a boy. She just mm -hmm. kept embedding in that. So who knows? Well, I, I I still feel more comfortable like this. But sometimes, you know, it crossed my mind. Like if she hadn't said that to me, would I, would I have started off as a film and then mm -hmm. decided this was who I was? Even though I have a combination of both, but it still was like she just embedded that mm -hmm. in my head. So when I went into these other relationships, uh, my feminine side, I kind of hid. Right. Because of what 
Jessica was just saying, because that's what she kept telling me. I ain't know anything about the gay life. I, I knew, <laughs> I had no, this was like my first introduction to it. And that's what mm -hmm. she kept saying. You are, you are, you are. But um, yeah, that was a controlling relationship. Mm -hmm. That was a controlling relationship. Not jealousy, but it was a very controlled Checks and balances uh, relationship. While we're on the topic, like ladies, everybody, like this evening, just like maybe go through your your mental rolodex and think about mm -hmm. the relationships that you've had and uh, what has been the, the the most consistent thing throughout your relationships. Like right, the common denominator. You're the common denominator. <laughs> common denominator. <laughs> and that's what I was saying earlier when I said I kept attracting these controlling, crazy, jealous women. I was like, okay, what am because I doing? Because maybe you're a sub and you just haven't Oh, uh, no, nah, I ain't no sub. <laughs> but <laughs> I, know, <laughs> I kept saying. Know. I'm just kept, saying we have to look at right. what we're doing. But I doing. don't attract them now because I took that time. When I was single for those six years, I took that time to get to know me. And to understand, because again, like I said, I didn't have a lot of uh, dating experience. In my 20s, where people basically get a lot of their experience in dating and dealing with people, I was in a relationship. She was seven years older than me. I was stuck in it from from time I was 20, getting ready to turn 21. All the way up until 30. I, but I mean, even still, I even, was stuck. even in that protected lifestyle. Very you, protected. Then afterwards, I kept getting all these crazy things, women. But you still learn things. She protected me. Grew. <laughs> well, maybe you're looking for a protector because you are. No, that sub. was Dan. No, <laughs> right. right, it keeps going. That back. was Dan, <laughs> but not now that. because now <laughs> I know myself and I know who I am. Subs but it took powerful. a minute. That's a it very, took a minute for me, you know. Strong position. Subs can be very powerful yeah, if they know very... how to play that position. Right, but. A sub position can be wasted on the wrong person. Mm -hmm. so, you know, some subs. But um, that's control. Like, no, I, some subs are really just lazy and want to leave <laughs> all the responsibility to their partner. Right. And then some subs are playing their position to make their dominant stronger right. oh, okay. and more powerful to get, you know, to right. build for the family. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's, it's the difference between being a hoe and a bottom hoe. Right, so to speak. Yeah. Oh no, I wasn't no hoe. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm I mean, saying, I wasn't no yeah, bottom hoe. Yeah. You understand what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I know. Yeah. Like I, the I dynamic understand of what it. you're saying. But in that situation, she was seven years older than me, and then she was just like, like I still learn responsibilities. She check and balance, pay bills and stuff like that. Like I was still responsible in in that aspect, but she but you wasn't knew that if, and if you failed at anything, she had your back. Yeah, you really didn't have yeah, to really if, if, sweat it. No, nah, yeah. I ain't have to sweat nothing because yeah, I know that's subbing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, because <laughs> I knew if anything, if anything happened, I was secure and I was safe. <laughs> yeah, well, her and and and. <laughs> you know, I had to realize though, but but again, when you get out of certain relationships, and when when I was getting out that relationship at first, yeah, it was kind of it was kind of scary at first, and mm -hmm. and I did think about going back a couple of times, but she broke one of my my things, something that I wholeheartedly I just have a thing against infidelity, mm -hmm. and she cheated, and you know, a lot of people thought well, it was something that we could have worked past, but for me, it's not. For me, if you cheat, that's the end of our relationship. Mm -hmm. oh, that's too bad. That's the end. If you, yeah, I'm just that's just me. I don't believe in infidelity. Right. So at that point, it was like for me, I couldn't trust her anymore. And, mm -hmm. and then she lied about it. And I think it wasn't so much that she cheated. For me, it was more the fact that she lied and it didn't come out. She didn't admit to it for another like three years. So had she admitted admitted it to it at that moment, then it's a strong possibility it may have been able to too but during that time in the back of my mind i kind of knew mm -hmm. that it was real that she cheated so i started preparing myself and i started thinking like inevitable. i need yeah. to prepare myself because i don't know how much longer this relationship is gonna be because it was that comfortability and that security and that safety with her but once she cheated i knew then this is not all this is not a forever thing i'm not safe here mm -hmm. can i it's suggest a, can i suggest that perhaps you were just ready to go because like the average person i think if it, if that's the only thing that's wrong like they they slipped and then they lied about it for three years the though. only reason you would really leave is because you're ready to yeah go. that's what i was saying like, i was if, ready because then yeah that's yeah. why i was that's what i just said because after it was no, in the back of my mind it took me three years to leave but i was ready to go but 
whoever, cause I and I'm and I'm being Cause honest. You're bored. No, <laughs> lesbians take the had the longest fucking breakups ever. <laughs> so true? in my mind, yes, I was breaking up with her for three years. <laughs> so <laughs> because I really kind of knew, and and everybody that's on this live are listening, they know Brittany know. <laughs> <laughs> lesbians have the longest breakup ever you breaking up and it'll take two years you been to start your breakup in 2017 and you ain't literally or always fully broke up into 2019 so yeah <laughs> it takes lesbians at least two years <laughs> to break up so in my mind i was that's breaking up with her for three are, years that's because see we have it wrong women are acting like heterosexual couples and they're not they're mm -hmm. really this is a sisterhood mm -hmm. and you can't break up with your sisters not that so easy. it's better you can't break up with your sisters you should not like if there was love there then there's always love there right you know unless they like killed your children and right. fed them to you or nah. something like, I, I can't imagine like what would break up. i don't believe in sharing dogs <laughs> lol me and my ex was breaking up two years see jennifer just said it took her and her ex to break two years i'm telling you <laughs> she just said it took them it takes lesbians forever because they want to share dogs then we'll think we broke up and then you'll get back together yeah it takes two years i had my second relationship coming out my 10-year relationship now my 10-year only took that one breakup it wasn't no back and forth she was trying to get me back for a couple of years and again for safety reasons and security reasons i continued to talk to her knowing that i really didn't want that no more but i, I just felt safe with her now my next relationship i'm really that, learning a lot about that, you right uh, now <laughs> <laughs> that lasted almost seven years mm. that relationship really was over after the first two mm. but it dried on for another five, five years, years. Wow. yeah it dried on for another another five years but again it was like she was just saying i had developed a friendship with that person Mm. I was friends with her and we was friends on that level. And it wasn't so much as an intimate or a sexual thing with me, but she was still around. Like we was not really in a relationship, but she was still around. Okay. So I would date other people during the course of that time, but I, I never fully opened myself up to be with nobody else because she over here. Right. So, but yeah, it took it that that lasted about seven years, and then the actual breakup was the last two years when I was just like, you know what, I'm done. Mm -hmm. Um, it's time to just move on and just He's let you complete. See, ago. only that's what I'm talking about about women right here. Yeah. This is what I'm talking about. Only a woman would be in a relationship thinking about getting out of it for seven years, only to spend another three years <laughs> working on getting out of it. Right. Like, that is insane. <laughs> when you talk about women taking on the male persona. But I learned whatever, my lesson later. Men don't do that. Mm -hmm. They just go get a pack of cigarettes and bread at the <laughs> corner store. And, and never, never come back. Come back. <laughs> That's how it's done. Like, what? <laughs> What? Right. Well, exactly, Earth. Jennifer. You get comfortable and you think people going to change, so you hang around. Right. Or you Why wait. would you think people are going to change, Jennifer? People don't change like that. You could change their behavior, but... Yeah, but they their have... Their core, they don't. But it's kind yeah, of I mean, like... Who you are is who but you are. But mine was security again. That seven-year relationship, I was comfortable. Mm. And for me, it takes me a long time to... You mean financially? No. No, because mm -hmm. I made more money in the seven-year relationship. The ten-year relationship, she made more money. My seven-year relationship, you made, I made comfortable and more money. Comfortable as in surrounding. Like it's not, it's not easy for me to open up to women. So it takes me a minute. and I'm kind of like closed off. So if I get comfortable with you and I'm able to like you know relax and kind of like be myself, mm. then I tend to want to hold on. Want to hold yeah. on because I'm comfortable and it's hard for me. Um, it's just hard. I, I ain't gonna say hard. It takes a lot more mental or something. Mm -hmm. I have to connect with you on a certain way. So it, it's hard. And then once I connect with you, like I connected with her and then again, this was right after my 10 year relationship. So I was used to being in a relationship. Mm -hmm. So when this person, this individual came along, we was cool. We was friends. Cause I was single for about a year and a half before her, almost two years. But when so, she came along, can I interrupt you? Go ahead. So do you just like, like you've never just like been single and just like played the field? And yeah, just... for those six years. I was for six years. Those are the stories that but you me weren't and... really playing the field. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Yeah. You're not really playing the field if you're abstinent. 
Not really. Yeah, you're still playing the field. You don't have to have sex to play the field. What? So, yeah, I was not having sex with the women, but I dated. Like, I was out uh, dating, and they would get mad at me. Okay, and that's a no, different topic. Yeah. They would laugh, and they'd be like, Don, why you ain't giving her no ass? She, you, yeah, no, I wasn't having like, sex with them. I was looking. I needed to be comfortable. You that's know, I had my weird. six months. That's not weird. That's like fake playing. That's not fake playing. <laughs> That's fake. I don't. I, and and like, we've had this conversation. I've told you. I've never had a one night stand. So you were if, just playing first base. <laughs> <laughs> I know she did. Basically, yeah. Basically, because if you try to have sex with me on the first night, I'm never gonna call you again. <laughs> I'm not, cause I think you're a slut. <laughs> she playing first base for six, seven years. Oh my god. Okay. I'm sorry. No judgment. Yeah, no judgment. But no. for six years, yeah, I was single for six years. I went into because that's after the crazy. But you didn't crazy. really get to sample. No, I was. Different I was women, different spirits, different energies. Well, different it was sex. almost five years because I still had. I was just coming out of the thing with the lady that I said I was holding on to for the sex. Sex coming out, so I was using her in the course of about a year, basically just for sex. Then <laughs> the, it was about five. Yeah, five years where I was not because after a while I was like, okay. Is I can't even she and turn me off now, but um yeah I was five six years I had to get to know myself but no if you have sex try to mm -hmm. have sex with me but to each his own I don't knock nobody that do it on the first night right. but if you you know and a lot of the women that I dated they would get mad because they'll go out you know we going out we hanging out late or drive whatever we going out to the movies and then you know I'm dropping them off at home they talk you want to come up now I'm good I'll talk to you tomorrow. Mm. So I don't know if you would call it just hanging out with females. No, no. I would call that also a form of abuse. How is that abuse? Kind of. Now, now, now you sound like Mr. Top of Don, no. you wrong. I would call that My son, yeah, my son told me that. She said, Don, you wrong. Why are you teasing these women? You are wrong. Yeah. I had one told I me. Mean, I would if talk you to don't you. go into it um, mm. with clarity and say to people that this will never amount to anything because right. I am abstinent, like mm. as a rule of who I am right oh, now. Oh, yeah, I told them. Um, no, no, uh, Kimmy, I did not feel guilty for using her. I used her because if you knew the sh emotional abuse, if you knew Ooh, the uh -uh. shit that she did, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 well, I told her I was using her. You what? know, she pissed me off one day and I <laughs> She pissed me off one day, and then I told her, I said, well, you ain't got to talk to me no more because all I wanted was sex. So, uh -oh. but so I guess that, so it, I don't call honest. it abuse yeah. because I was honest and I was up front. She knew we was not about to get back together mm. and all of that. So, so no, I don't, I don't feel guilty. I didn't feel guilty at all. Mm. Entertaining them when you were not interested. Right. That's what I was talking about. Uh, that's oh. what came, the well, I was one. interested, no, just not aren't. interested <laughs> in sex. <laughs> No, it was almost like a control thing. You need to think about that. That was a control thing? Yeah. Like, well, hold on. Let me talk for us just a okay. second. Calm down. <laughs> okay, Kimmy, you listening? I agree with you. Look, man, it's almost like you're playing a game with people's feelings, with people's clitoral feelings. <laughs> clitoral That's a word? Feelings. Yes. It's going you know to be saying? one tonight. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's going to be one tonight. Yeah, you haven't, like, you, you haven't, you're controlling it and you feeling your power by controlling the situations like you were getting off on controlling the women and their ability to get with Kimmy you. Kimmy talking about absolutely control. Right, Kimmy? Right. Yeah. They say so, it was control. That's control. That's abuse. That is abuse. That is abuse too. That is a form of abuse. So, my choosing not to have sex with these women. While still going out with them and leading them on, yes. But I told them they weren't getting none. Come on, Don. These women, though. <laughs> tell her to preach. You can yeah, tell I a know woman they, yeah. something and she's going to make them, them a whole other thing. They like, tried anyway, but I didn't tell get, me to preach. Yeah, but I didn't, <laughs> yeah, I didn't give preaching. in. <laughs> and they would go to my son, Mr., and they would complain to Mr., like, Mr., you know, what's up with Don, da-da-da. So, but... Hey, you could hold my hand or whatever, but I told I, I I don't know. I guess it was control, but at at the time it was just me. I don't you know don't mm. rush at me like that. Let me do it when I'm ready to do it. See, when I decided to be abstinent, it was to control myself. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Not anybody else. Just, I wasn't controlling. Just, just, uh, <laughs> Y'all say it was control, but I was up front with him. <laughs> she said she was controlling herself. I, I definitely, uh, I feel like for 
abstinence can be used um, very effectively when doing soul searching. Yes. Because it's really hard to um, be honest with yourself when you have everybody else's energy, energy in you. running through you. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like right. this is so real, And that's why I was. I didn't want mm-hmm. that energy in me. Confession. Kimmy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, she keeps saying dating women you have no interest in is wrong. <laughs> it's wrong. <laughs> it's like a I game. Mean, it it's is, unfair. It's unfair. Okay, mm-hmm. but Kimmy, mm-hmm. it was I was interested in them at that moment and at that time. Done. I was interested in hanging out with them, but I just was not interested in sex. <laughs> then go on about your business, though. Mm-hmm. Just, just hang out and be like, all right, we cool, we friends. I, I wouldn't place a label of we're dating. But even if you know, like, they it's like, like this. you, it's then like it's, this. Yeah. If you know that this person likes you yeah, way, yeah. More, into it. <laughs> yeah. way more than you like them, mm-hmm. it, you need to just give them a mercy kill. What's a mercy kill? When you just kill the relationship right. out of mercy because you know that nothing is ever going to result from it and they would never be satisfied with a friendship. Right. And my, my thing with that is like, exactly, I agree with that. Kim, cause you she said to. I wasn't emotionally available, so why play? Exactly. Yeah, and, and then and what you have Jessica to do that. said, you, have you know, to so I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get that to y'all ladies. Yeah, I, I was no. not emotionally <laughs> available, but I wanted to experience the dating, but I just mm. did not want to get into anything sexual you know and, and i had one young lady though she tried to hang in there she hung in there for about six months mm-hmm. white girl no no nah, not the white girl <laughs> how long the white you? but that that's but, the but difference did the white though. girl have more patience with you the white girl had patience mm-hmm. the white woman she had patience it was the black girls that wanted the, the wanted the booty the black <laughs> the white women that i was dating they they were patient they mm-hmm. they wasn't thinking about sex they would just wanted companionship or whatever like I did but they was not interested and then when I posted that and I remember and I'm waiting for this post to pop back up in my news feed mm-hmm. I remember when that post popped up and everybody got pissed because I was dating this white woman and she was bad too look like uh Jamie Lee Curtis to me she had a nice body used to work out <laughs> she I'm serious she was bad but when I was dating her they got a lot of um people got upset mm-hmm. but she wasn't trying to have sex either I went to her house she came to my house we went out, laid in the bed together and everything, watched mm-hmm. the movie. She wasn't interested in sex. But you know how to tell when a black girl, you can't lay on the couch with a black girl because I'm not racist or nothing, but you know when y'all hype that one leg up. <laughs> <laughs> you laying in the bed, you know when they want to have sex or you laying on the couch or sitting there because they, y'all got this thing with that one leg. You put that one leg up and you toot your booty out. It's, it, <laughs> it, it, it's what? What, I'm, just I'm not gonna lie there is a move out there that does exist that's like that but my my thing most of the mercy kill is okay. like i've always been i'd rather hurt your feelings now than to break your heart later and that's how i feel about the mercy kill because if we're in this dynamic and you're feeling me way more and i know i'd rather tell you now hurt your feelings you'll be mad at me might call me all types of names but eventually you'll get over it because it's so early mm-hmm. then to lead you on and then again it doesn't happen and then now you're so invested that your heart like now i've completely shattered you and broken your heart mm-hmm. so but i, didn't I agree do with that. that i'm not saying Wait, you did I, before, because i would only go like one or two dates and the minute they initiate but i would tell them up front and they already knew this because we was doing the radio so it was like a challenge to them but no i was mm-hmm. not emotional available but it's a challenge because every woman always think well, maybe I'm it that was a woman. challenge to you Every woman I always think I'm that woman. I'm gonna break her. Maybe, I'm that woman. maybe, maybe it was a challenge to you. No, it wasn't a challenge to maybe. me. I wasn't interested. <laughs> okay, well, well, we'll evaluate that in another show. Yeah. Emotionally <laughs> unavailable is a killer. That's what Moni said. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I, I wanted to get into this a little bit before mm-hmm. um, the show ends. Um, we had started talking about a little bit, and I was going to talk about family and your support system. Absolutely. Um, so for, for those of us who have lived through or are presently going through domestic violence situations, like situations that really are foul Mm -hmm. and you know, they're foul in your heart of hearts, you just know that they're foul. I want to suggest that we start to look beyond the person that we're dating. I think we have to look at. I remember when I when I grew up in church, 
it was important if you were going to be with somebody mm -hmm. to go to counseling with the pastor. Yeah. I and I don't think people really do stuff like that anymore. Mm -hmm. But ba nah. back then, it was like really important. Um, I feel like we need to do a type of counseling in the beginning. Like at the point that you know that a relationship is going to be serious. Mm -hmm. This person needs to meet your people. This person needs to meet the people that you care the most about and the people who care the most about you. Right. The people who have your best interest at heart. I'm not talking about your frenemies. Right. I'm talking about the ones that really love you. Because, My mommy. <laughs> yeah, because this person is not just going to be in a relationship with you, assumably. They're right. going to be in a relationship with everyone that you're in a relationship with. With And it's important also to look at the relationships that they have. Mm -hmm. Look at, like you were saying earlier, mm -hmm. what kind of relationship does their parents have? Right. What kind of, you know, relationship, do, do they have a relationship with their parents? Right. Um, do they have sisters? Do they have brothers? How do their coworkers even feel about them? You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, how they treat those interpersonal relationships. Yeah. Because that can kind of see how you're going to treat me. Because if you treat your yeah. mom bad. Yeah, I think we, we do ourselves a disservice yeah. by just going over for date night at their apartment, Netflix and chilling. Right. No, I need to see you. <laughs> like, I need to see you in the community. I need right. to see how you roll, how people respond to you. Do they respect you? Do they listen to you? Right. Are you a leader? Are you a follower? Right. Are you, you know what I'm saying? Like money, <laughs> look, can I, and this is the real test. Can I sit down and have lunch with your ex? Mm. No. Yeah. Can That'd I be, sit I... down and have lunch with your ex? Mm -hmm. You could sit down and have lunch with my ex. I got no shame in my game. No. You could sit down we can have lunch but... <laughs> with my ex. No, seriously, yeah. we need to really start getting serious. About... And the reason why I say no to that. First of all, I don't even, I don't even whole exes as friends you are ex you are ex you have no place in my current life mm -hmm. so i don't um they ended on, on good terms all except one where if we see each other we will speak to each other they're not even my friend on facebook we don't follow each other on facebook well they might follow me now i don't know but um we're not friends on facebook or anything like that the only our only person number mm. it's a 10 year relationship and we don't talk often but when we first broke up and i broke it off with her i think it was like five years no communication and we happened to bump into each I other i find that curious i feel like you can't go and apply for a job and not give references right why would but i give why, would, good why do i need any but <laughs> why would an ex why would i need an ex to put a stamp on my next relationship. They don't have shit to do well, with my upcoming I'm saying it's not putting a stamp on yeah. it, but it shouldn't be something that you're fearful of. I'm not fearful of it. But mm -hmm. me personally, I don't I don't deal with exes. I don't I don't feel my ex has anything to do with who I'm currently dating. Mm -hmm. And I don't care to know anything or be hanging out with anybody I'm dating exes. I just that's just me personally. It would just what be an interesting think? conversation to be able to sit down with an ex because honestly when you meet somebody you meet their representative. Yes. So you're gonna show all of the good things about who you are as a person and everything. Not to suggest that you're a liar in any way, but again, I'm just meeting you. So I'm just getting to know you. So having lunch with your ex could tell me a lot about who you've dated, how you've dated, how the relationship went, how they feel about you, if they still feel about you, different things that they come. Because if you're, you know, an evolved individual, you can tell when somebody is just being spiteful and mean and saying things because right. they're wanting to change your perception or if they're being honest about it. So I would actually be interested in having like lunch if I can sit and talk to the individual. Oh, I wish we could do an event. Like, that that was was, I would do it. Like, that would be awesome because like because it tells exes. you who you've been. Because my thing is like I, I should be able to get a feel for who you've dated in the past. Because my thing is a lot of people due to their past relationships and experiences, they kind of bring that into the next relationship. Yeah, so if I see your ex is a certain type of way and they're always like this, so then now that you're with me, when you respond to certain things that I say and do, I'll know, okay, well, she used to do that. Clearly, she used to do that. So maybe I need to respond differently and get that different response to you because, you know, because you're still holding on to whatever that is. So I... 
And am I best friends with my exes? No. I'm business partners with two of them. So the, I can obviously we can be grown and, and have that conversation. But I'm not fearful of that. If anybody that yeah, I talk to fearful. now was to be like, hey, you know, could, uh, you know, if you still have that communication, okay. would you be upset if I did that? Okay. Okay. Hold so, on a second. So Jennifer said, chance. hold on. Jennifer mm-hmm. said she don't agree. Um, she said, I don't have much of a relationship with my family. That doesn't mean I'm a bad person. You can't choose your family. Sometimes even family is toxic. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce your first name, so I'm going to say Dickinson. <laughs> said, yeah, my ex will never be back in the picture. Um, my exes will never be back in the picture, even <laughs> friend-wise. Uh, Kimmy <laughs> said, true, Jennifer. Um, Dickinson said the show has touched on on so many topics. Yeah, yeah we, we yeah. did. We kind of we, we we went around a, a lot. We supposed <laughs> to be talking about dangerous love and controlling, but you know we women, so those topics usually lead to other topics. Um, mm-hmm. so yeah, but exes, nah. But I I think I would like to have a show like that. If anybody is friends with their ex and they're in a current relationship, and you want to be a guest on our show. Yeah. Um, hit me up 312-715-8219 since Jessica won't experience an ex <laughs> a lover in the no. current <laughs> no 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 what I'm saying is why bring toxic back around and reference them when but they're, they're not always toxic though they're better. not always toxic but if you met somebody's ex and they told you occasionally this person would sock me in the eye wouldn't you like to know that <laughs> But that's not always true because, again, What's change behavior. True? Okay, say you in the relationship and you've been in the relationship with this person for the last two or three years. This person never laid a hand on you. They might have had a previous relationship where maybe that person provoked them or something happened where it was a toxic relationship. But they took some time to get themselves together. Now they with you, never laid a hand on you, never disrespected you or nothing. But then this ex come along and tell you that this person was physically abusive to them. Then what you going to do? You well, gonna I'm change not your talking view? about three years inside yeah. a relationship. I right. said when you first meet somebody. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know. It, it's a suggestion. Personally, like I told my... My, oh, no, I my ex husband, my ex husband's mm-hmm. girlfriend, mm-hmm. and I were talking on the phone, and I shared some information. I thought she, <laughs> she should know. She should know. <laughs> That's why exes should and be that talking. way, when she when she got the STD, I told her <laughs> about. <laughs> right. She wasn't surprised. I'm just saying, sometimes you can learn something about someone. And it's not always bad. From the people like, that are in that person's life. It doesn't because, always have to be negative. My The ex that I'm actually a business partner with, um, I had a conversation with the well, now current wife prior to them getting married. And it, it was a very candid conversation. I, I explained what my experience was dating with them and everything like that. And we just had that conversation back and forth. I expressed some stuff that I had witnessed and experienced because that relationship didn't end on like toxic or bad terms. That wasn't a toxic relationship. We okay, just got to not a point agreeing on y'all with these exes. Where, <laughs> they're not, not, got, no, I'm nah, just saying, we just got to a point where they said exes are exes for a reason. Yes, but we <laughs> it, it might come and pardon. mess up something. They not agreeing with y'all with But I didn't exes. mess, they're married. So how did I mess it up? No, I, and I had nothing bad. That like, the exes, if bringing the ex up may mess up your current and then um that's money i hope yeah. i'm saying yeah, your name right this time it says sometimes you and your ex grow apart but you right. are in different places and are great friends the relationship exactly. ended one good note you are able to communicate with each other on a positive note exactly jennifer said depends on the maturity level of people right yes um, Dick, dickinson said uh they better learn me with better learn me without the oh they better learn me without the ex references um, exactly, and then Jennifer said exactly. Some exes are still bitter. Talking about like we're, being best friends with that. Yeah, we're not talking like, about that. Like, we're, like, we're talking about. I, I was speaking specifically in relation to abuse. When you start seeing signs, right, of you know the control, you start seeing signs that this person might be this type of way. It might be good to find out is this how this person is or is this a new thing is this a new thing just for me right (laughs) like how did i become so lucky is this person experienced an ass whooping like (laughs) how bad is this gonna be right like is this person's mama gonna support them in whooping my ass right but see everybody 
different people bring out different things but again you yeah. still the common denominator but right. different people bring out different things in you mm. you might have that one individual that just pisses you off all the time or for whatever your energy is not matching up because it goes back to a spiritual thing your energy maybe physically you might be attracted to this person but spiritually y'all bumping heads somewhere the spirits in, in never never land ain't getting along <laughs> so it just depends on the person because some people just bring out bad energy in you and then mm -hmm. some people don't bring out bad energy in you it's, and that goes even with you friends. are you saying some people drive you to whoop they ass no that's what we're talking about oh abuse. no no i'm not saying i'm not saying that because I've been you in should put your like hand that. on someone under any circumstance what, say what i've been in a situation like that uh i was dating somebody their previous relationship they were in an abusive relationship um, their girlfriend and as well as the girlfriend's child used to beat on them and everything then we got into a relationship I'm not like that completely opposed to that however because I wasn't and that's what they were used to towards the end they would Provoking. they were so good at poking and prodding to where I thought about it and that's what ultimately ended us is because you drove me that far over the cliff where I even entertained it and that's oh. not okay to me that like that's not okay to me and i was like right. i can't why am anymore. i feeling so right. like i want to punch you in the face right, right now. <laughs> so i so i do know that people can drive you to that even if you're not that person so i agree with you it, it is about the energy and everything because like i said and they even said they were so used to that ex doing that and then when i came along and i'm not that's not my my mo it was almost like a challenge to them like well i'm gonna do i'm gonna see how far i can push you until you do this and I was like, yeah, I gotta go because we gonna be in here fighting like two grown men in a minute. Like, like we gonna like I, I had to remove myself because I was like, I'm not gonna allow you to send me to hell. I'm not. You're trying to get me there, but I'm, I'm not gonna allow that to you. Mm -hmm. But it did get to a point where I entertained it, mm -hmm. and that to me was very toxic. So let me ask y'all something else. Do you think some people are so desperate for attention? That they'll even look for negative attention? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. I think that probably was... Because at the time when they started the poking and prodding, I had already... We had already started going down, so the intimacy stopped. So it was like right after the intimacy got like slowed down and stopped, that's when the poking and prodding started. Because they're like, okay, well, if we're not going to be intimate with each other, let's then you, fight. like let's fight then. And then it was like, <laughs> no, you don't want to do that. Like, you don't want to do that. This too Right. <laughs> exactly. So I'm like, well, now you, you don't want that action, bro. Because again, I was a different person a couple years ago so you don't want that person and and so yes i do believe that people are starved for attention it's like in society when you have women dressing a certain way online or, or you know exposing themselves or other people it's like you you hunger for that attention so much that bad you know bad attention or bad press is, is good press mm -hmm. to them so yes i believe that some people are just that starved for it that you know, if you're hitting me, then you're paying attention to me. Or if you're, if we're fighting, if we're arguing, if we're sparring, if you're trying to control, mm -hmm. or you're allowing me to control, then you're paying attention to me. So let me ask you: Do you think that these images that we then see in the press, especially women, mm -hmm. um, like in the reality shows and stuff like that, where it's like, "Bitch, this and, right. and all this," <laughs> do you think that affects the culture of? women to women relationships absolutely because you have younger girls that are coming up and seeing this and feel like okay this is how this is how we act this is normalized now so that type oh, of what attitude talking about that fighting and shit that goes on on reality yeah, that's, but that's normalized now yeah what happened to uh world hip-hop did it get taken down because you remember no, they world star no yeah. it's still up there oh because i know still. they used to share those videos all the time but mm -hmm. i hadn't seen any but yeah, um, maybe world i ain't seen them because there. i didn't <laughs> like, get the people who kept sharing me in there mm -hmm. yeah um i think so because now that you have other people because i mean you gotta understand that's that's not just here in the states that's worldwide that are seeing these images so when we as black women travel to these other countries that's why we deal with a lot of things that we deal with in these other countries specifically in asia for some reason but um what do you mean? where as far as like we're perceived as always being that way so we're perceived as being love and hip-hop whenever we go oh, outside of the country really? so yeah so when you meet these people in other countries and all they have is that 
that image of what a black woman is being argumentative that loud angry and angry black woman. Right. So they all they have that is that. So that's what they hold on to and assume that you are. So I think that kind of ties in, of course, here too, because as a girl, like representation is important. And if your only image of representation is love and hip hop and, um, you know, housewives and all this, where you're seeing these women who are in powerful positions, but they're competing with each other in this way, you feel like that's what you have to do. And that's how it's supposed to be when it should be a sisterhood. Like if I'm succeeding, you should, I should want you as my sister, I should want you to succeed too. Mm -hmm. So we both should be competing against everyone else and not each other. Mm -hmm. So, so yes, I agree with that. And yeah, people, sense. I know we all over the place. Yeah. But I'm glad y'all still enjoying it. <laughs> no, we're yes, really we, not all over the place, Oh, uh, Well, though. Jessica say we're really not all. So all of this. <laughs> Ties back that's in. That's not on you. Uh-uh. Light. Oh, the light. Oh, okay. I'm about to say, uh, I don't know where that light We're really from. not all over the place. Right. Because we're really talking from? about. Was that light on a minute ago? No, it wasn't. Abuse. Right. We're really talking about abuse. I don't know and we're talking about the many different forms that, that it comes in. And since, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of your listeners, I know, are women who are in relationships with women, right. then the relationship we have with women matters for Absolutely. this conversation. And and not just uh, in terms of a domestic partnership, oh, no, but also domestic friendships. Right. I just feel like if you're going to be in relationships with each other, if women are going to be having like sexual relationships with each other, um, we need to get some understanding of what a relationship actually is. Mm. And now a relationship is not just um, being with somebody who makes you orgasm. Right. Um, you know, <laughs> any old hoe could do that. Right. <laughs> like, Dang. for real. Yeah. I yeah. think I think if we're going to be adopting any kind of, what do you call it, hetero, heteronormative normative yeah. behaviors, mm-hmm. then they need to include uh, commitment, the type of commitment that American marriage is based on. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's not as simple as you come into my life, especially if you're messing with somebody that used to be straight who has children. You can't oh, yeah. just come into another woman's life and assume all this responsibility and then just drop it. Talking about, I'm not on your, I'm your, your Facebook friend. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not your Facebook friend. I'm no going to block you on like, Facebook. Uh, right. Instagram. Like, like my five-year-old is calling you mom right. for five years. You know, <laughs> and then all of a sudden, you got my Facebook right. friend. Like, it's like, I'm not going. Yeah. I'm not going there. <laughs> the law, the courts don't allow men to come into your life mm. and disrupt the whole flow of thing, putting their penis all in every little hole you got, right. and then just leave without making sure that you are stable. And mm-hmm. I don't think But it's they could do fair. it. You could do that now. Because it's a lesbian couple, the young lady, I'm trying to get her Brittany to come on Grinning? the show. Oh. No, not her. Um, I'm not going to say her name right now, but I had spoke to her briefly. She was in, because you know, with the same sex marriage thing. Yeah. And what a lot of people don't, don't, um, don't realize that happened when they did that, because it goes back to the, what did you say? Hetero, heteronormative. The heteronormative, yeah. Yeah. So, what they don't realize is what Jessica's saying. Like, now, when they did that, it took away um, domestic partnership in a lot of areas. Only mm-hmm. places where people already currently had one. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of heterosexuals got pissed, pissed off because now they can't even do a domestic partnership yeah. in certain cities or and certain areas. Or common law. Marriage, or common they law. It, yeah. they, it's almost obsolete now because they feel like everybody could get married. Mm-hmm. But when they was asking for this, these rights to get married, and I went to all the forums up in Springfield, Illinois, when I was working on this mayor campaign, they don't. They didn't realize at that time what they was asking for. And basically, without the same-sex marriage, they pretty much had more um, support than they realized, but they wasn't aware of what or how to get it. Mm-hmm. So they wanted to holler same-sex marriage, same-sex marriage. So now those same rules, the most important ones, because they said, well, we only got, what, 448 and we ain't get the other 800? Niggas, y'all don't need the other ones because them little ones that you got, <laughs> y'all ain't even know what y'all was asking for. So she got married. 
when mm. she got married, she she made um she was making at the time she was making more money. Mm-hmm. She was making more money than the other lady that she married. Right. During that process, the uh, girl had a child. She was pregnant while they got married. She was mm-hmm. pregnant. But they got married or whatever. The child became the child, step child or whatever. Then they did a legal adoption too. So right. now when they go and they was only together for like, what, four years or something, now she wants to get a divorce. That girl took her to court like, uh-uh, nigga, you ain't finna just walk away. You finna pay some stuff. So she getting alimony and she got to pay child support. Uh-huh. But now she wants to get upset about, well, we two women and we not this. But you asked for these rights. You asked mm-hmm. for these rights. So now you got to make up the difference because just like in heterosexual relationships, when a man come in and he gives a woman a certain thing, babies or whatever, and they used to a certain living style, mm-hmm. and now they, he think he just going to walk away. If the woman is smart enough, she going to go to court and she going to get her rights. And this is the same situation. So she wanted to come on because she don't feel like she should be paying child support for this baby because now she want to mm-hmm. say well i'm not the daddy but you signed papers <laughs> <laughs> you did sign the paper you signed papers so you because the biological father mm-hmm. is uh, uh, i guess back in the child life or whatever oh, okay. but you still sign papers but since the biological mother has custody of this child she still has a right to let this child know who who the daddy was because she was straight at the time and mm-hmm. then she decided i guess she wanted to deal with women or whatever it ain't work out but yeah she has to pay she had to pay child support or alimony to well, them. You got real specific. I just meant like, I get it. But yeah. I, I, I just meant like just just in general, it's like we we want to have all the rights mm-hmm. that any relationship will have until we don't want to deal with that person anymore. Then and we then just women. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. So it's oh, like the ones that get into a relationship, they are stood and then, yeah. it, uh, and then they the stood and they the man in the relationship and then when they move in with the woman, now it's time to pay bills. Now it's two women we splitting this shit 50 <laughs> Right. Now it's just, yeah, yeah now we, we just <laughs> girls, you know what I'm saying? Like we... <laughs> Yeah, now we two females and we're right. going to split it. Unless 50-50. I'm being disrespectful, then mm-hmm. you want to control and yeah. knock me upside the head mm-hmm. like you, some man. Right. Or something like it's But very how can confusing. you control if, and again, if you're saying, I'm going to tell you right I'm now, I'm controlling and I'm this man in this relationship, but now y'all in the house together and now you like, oh, nah, you got to pay half of these, you got to pay half of these bills, but you still want to control shit, but they they saying, because they do it. Brittany know what I'm talking about. They're yeah. all the way up until the point where they move in. They'll be hollering about they the man, they the man. But then, because you know, in most, well, you still got some lazy men out there. You do have some women that take care of men. But yeah, those basically, are no, I'm talking about real men. <laughs> but basically. Yeah, those women are studs. Because no, I'm talking about heterosexual relationships. I know. Yeah, she said ah. those straight women are studs. Ah. <laughs> those are the studs I was talking about. But <laughs> yeah. ah, those are the ones you're talking about. Yeah. But um, old-fashioned way, normal mm-hmm. way, and, and then they want to go by these heterosexual, follow these heterosexual rules. Mm-hmm. If you a man growing up, my stepdad did take care of the joy 80% of the bills. Mm-hmm. My mom worked, but he paid 80% of those household bills. But when you get two women, one saying they're a man, then they get in a relationship all of a sudden. We two women. And somebody posted that not too long ago on Facebook. Mm-hmm. It was on there. You saw it? Yeah, it was I on there that. like like if you, and I forget, forget. I wish I knew who posted. It had a lot of comments on there. And they was all saying 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50. And I'm like, but y'all are uh, supposed to be. You. Tajia, Tajia, but y'all are supposed to be men, but they was on there saying everything was 50-50. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I guess if we're uh, woke, right. <laughs> then it's 50-50, right. and we're all equal, and you don't get to tell me what to do. Right. Well, I would tell you right now, there will be no romance without finance. Right. For most <laughs> women are not. I don't know who this brand new woman is. <laughs> right, right. Uh, you know right. what? My friend, my friend uh, Latoya recently pointed out a song to me. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's got a talking part. I can't remember the name of the song, but they'll probably know on live. Um, she said, that car he drive, I bought it. 
Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Them clothes he Oh, did. yeah. I'm, uh, I brought it's it. Like oh, uh, hello, Barbara. My name is Shirley. It's an yeah, older yeah, song. Yeah, yeah. 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 She said from the top of his, I, I bought that. House. And she was yeah. so, my, and I, that is my complaint about that song because I'm like, she's so proud that he just pimped her. Like, right. She's so happy that she just complete, basically took care of this man and he's still sleeping with that woman. But that's Kimmy okay. said, shouldn't it be 50 50 um, in any relationship? Yeah. A hundred, a hundred. Why fifty, fifty? No, we was talking about finance when I was saying yeah. how studs get in and they um, want to now they want to control everything, but they want to say fifty, fifty. Well, just because they but it's kind of hard eighty percent of the bills, I could be doing something else that's that's pulling the line. So, like in that situation in a marriage, okay, the man's paying eighty percent of the bills, but maybe the woman is doing eighty percent of the housework or the child rearing. So it balances. Right, it so balances. it's not so much that it's fifty fifty. We're splitting everything. It could be just your strength is this, so this is what you do. My strength is this, so this is what I do, and together we balance out. So everything is a hundred percent. She think, was saying financially, I think depending but on the girl, depending mm-hmm. on the the people, mm-hmm. um, some women are their are their best selves when they can be like you know, do their Barbie thing. Some mm-hmm. women love to do the Barbie thing and the Barbie thing is really important. The Barbie thing. Mm-hmm. Okay. You understand what I'm talking about? Well, Dickerson said it should be 50-50, step up or be single, lazy or new generation craziness. What? So she's saying that financially it should be 100-100. Mm-hmm. I, I don't really know, but... Okay. I just know I just know some things cost a lot of money. Right. And I watch women. Mm-hmm. I see how women get down these days. <laughs> Man, it's expensive to <laughs> look a certain way. Like right. it is expensive. So <laughs> you can't really go one hundred percent on household if mm-hmm. you're going that to that length. For your fin mm-hmm. to get your, to get in drag, right. I was talking about that earlier. Yeah. We, we, right. we walk around, you fall in love with a certain image, and then these women are trying to maintain that image, and they're getting butt injections and right. making yeah, sure see, the titties are perky the and <laughs> making sure the hair sales. is laid. Right. No, I'm just saying, like I, that I know that's money. why I do natural. I don't do all the makeup and stuff because, and I tell people that all the time. Somebody got to pay to keep them looking like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and absolutely. people will say, "Well, I'm not gonna pay to have them looking like that," but you are gonna pay to have them looking like that because if you want to keep them looking like that and y'all move in together then their priority is going to be to get that weave and that stuff to stay looking like that right. so that's yeah. going to take away from what they can contribute to a household that's all I'm but saying. in in lesbian relationships um basically you have to combine your income because right. women don't really um in the real world, make what men make. Men are overpaid. You could do the same job as a man, and he might be making 80000 while the woman making 60000 to do that same job. Right. Yeah, so I, I get the 50-50 concept. I'm not saying that there, there's anything wrong with financially splitting things. But, however, I agree to your point. Like, okay, if I'm financially splitting this with you, then if I do, it's the bills. I'm not going to then now take care of this image that you want to uphold. Because that's something for you. So I'm not, I shouldn't be responsible to pay for, you know, $500 worth of bundles because you want to continue to look this way or, or however. So yeah, but... I'm sorry, Dickerson. She said not financially. She said in general, both people should be given 100 and 100 That's why I'm saying, yeah, 100%. Yeah, and she it. said, like, like you said, Brittany, yeah. um, balance is the key. Right, because if you're in a relationship with somebody who doesn't make as much as you, should they still bear the same type of right? And that was one of the um, comments that was on that post. Um, It said that it said if a person made a hundred thousand and somebody made forty thousand, should because everybody was saying fifty fifty, and she came back and she said if one person made a hundred thousand and somebody made forty thousand, should it still be fifty fifty on the bills? Right. I don't think so. I personally, I don't. I don't. Because I, I feel like at the, at the end of the day, like financially speaking, if you're only making forty thousand, I'm making a hundred thousand. Now I'm not saying go out and create all these extra bills where I'm just paying for everything, right? But a contribution of some sort, I feel like, should be had, and I think that that would be in any type of living relationship, either if it's friends or in a relationship. Like, but that's you have also to about something. what we was talking about control, because. Mm-hmm. On a financial level, sometimes uh, people don't oh, realize people that can be definitely. abusive as well. Finances yeah. can be an abusive situation as well, especially if you're in a situation um, 
again, trying to pay for the upkeep of somebody you know you can't afford. And right. then you with somebody and you know they can't afford it, but you don't care. You just want the right. latest iPhone, the weed, the mm-hmm. makeup. You want to go to the most expensive hotel and all these expensive dates. But you know y'all really can't afford this, but you putting this pressure on the, on other, your, person, on the yeah. other person to go to these places, mm-hmm. then that's financial abuse. I see that because especially or the other way around, if you yeah, make more money, abuse. then it's almost like, okay, well, everything's in my name. So oh, you got to do what I say because everything right. is in my name or I'm going to put you out. Or right. I'm that's control. So that's a form of control in, on the yeah. other the, aspect of, of the finances. Yeah. Because yeah, everything well, is in your name. There's also the other thing. Like if you, you meet somebody mm-hmm. and that person is clearly accustomed to a certain lifestyle right but you want to be with that person Mm -hmm. but you know you can't afford to be with that person you walk away you kind of did that to yourself essentially and and some situations you can but my thought process on this is i'm talking about asking the person to take the l to be with you no i'm talking about that person who wants you to buy them what they can't afford to buy themselves now if you able to keep up your own thing and you able to buy your own red bottoms then fine but don't come to me and expect me to buy you some red bottoms and you can't even buy your own damn self a pair of red bottoms (laughs) oh well you ain't trying to be with females (laughs) (laughs) that's what women do (laughs) you know what i'm saying (laughs) <laughs> See, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. But I'm like, just saying, but that's true. Why? I really, wish, your... I really wish these lesbians out here would really take the time. Since you've been working at your job, mm-hmm. when you made friends with those men, didn't you start to see a kind of different perspective? I always made friends with the males at work. That's what I'm saying. But don't you see something different and feel something different, like when you're talking to them about women? Than when you're talking to women about women. Yeah, yeah. I get a totally different. You know what I'm yeah, I get a totally Men different have an understanding, understanding of, of who that. women are and right. what their role is. And right. in general, they don't have a problem with it. No, they yeah, they don't. But and so when these lesbians mm-hmm. running around here trying to date straight girls, that's the problem. <laughs> trying right. to prove yeah, how much of a man girls. they are man. by pulling straight <laughs> girls and expect straight girls mm-hmm. to Dude. take the L on things that they're used to. Mm-hmm. If they make five hundred dollars. In a week, and they they used to spending two fifty on a weave, or used to some dude getting it for them. Right. That's uh-huh. what they're used to, right? Right, to because that's the difference, change. and that's what what I be trying <laughs> right. to tell people. You, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, because a man will pay for ass. Fuck yeah. And I'm just being blunt. A man will pay for ass right. if if he wanna if he wanna have sex, he'll pay your phone bill. He'll right. be like, oh, okay, I'm yes. going to pay this little $70, $80 right. phone bill because he want his Wayne Wayne sucked or whatever. <laughs> so he's going to pay the bill and going on about his business. Whereas when you dealing with well, another woman, woman not, and in, in my situation, like when it. I was dating and this girl, I, we had went out a couple of times. We hadn't even had sex or nothing. Uh-huh. And she started talking about, yeah, my cell phone bill is doing so. Okay, and <laughs> <laughs> my cell phone is doing so. Right. But I'm just saying, don't come at me like that. Like, why are you telling me? <laughs> when your cell phone is due. I need forty dollars. Like that's, that's I don't care. Like, like girls, I need forty dollars. Right, like like we hadn't even did nothing, but she was insinuating <laughs> if I pay her phone bill, <laughs> we was gonna do something. But I'm you looking like, I'm I need forty dollars. Right, yeah, like, actually, you know, I'm gonna write one that. tonight. <laughs> I'm gonna write one tonight. Yeah, like, like, I need, like, yeah no, next no, week. Like no, <laughs> that'd be nice. but you could tell a guy that, and be, and I have straight male friends, and mm-hmm. you could tell them, and then they, they told me, I, they'd be like, yeah, I just want to ask. I said, you pay her phone bill. Yeah, man, I should never pay. I should have waited till afterwards. See, okay, me and okay. Pay, now I'm y'all gonna get it. mad at me, and I'm, now we're clearly <laughs> off topic. <Right. laughs> but now we're off topic. Right. But <laughs> let me just say the reason I don't. This is why people don't like me. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I don't really have a problem with men making more money mm-hmm. is because I know what men have to spend on women, and I think that might be why they make more money. Does that sound crazy? No, nah, because they, they typically are the head of household. So it does not sound crazy. I mean, it, it might, sound, sound, it might sound antiquated because mm-hmm. we don't see that in the black community. Right. We don't see men like taking care of their household like that. But right. there, there still are men of course, yes, who yes, take, care take care of their household. And I think that might be the tradition, the American tradition. I work mm-hmm. with men who take care of their households. Right, right. Mm-hmm. So that women usually are allowed to spend their money on things that they need for the house. Usually food. Mm-hmm. 
but not often do they have to pitch in and pay like the electric bill. Like that's usually exactly covered. they're paying for yeah. lust. <laughs> no, it's not paying no, for lust. No, so, that, that's what she said. She said women are more into emotional than men. They are paying mostly for lust. We, we saw, sex. No, that's what oh, Dickinson so said. They're, she, they're playing for... What I said earlier, they're paying for sex. But now that you say it that way, I especially back in like the 50s era when there was a lot of women in the home as opposed to working. Or, sounds crazy, or they were crazy. in the office, but they were like secretaries. Uh -huh. That... That analogy that actually makes sense as to mm -hmm. because men are paying more mm -hmm. um, for the upkeep of not only the house but the woman as well, the children, and, and everything else. Usually, <coughs> past relationships, other children, from yeah, because they would have like more, yeah, other they families have bills. and stuff like that. So I, I guess in that sense, that that would make sense. I guess why that there's such a difference with the. Income. Mm -hmm. I think the tradition and the laws haven't really caught up with the contemporary lifestyle. The reality, yeah. Where the reality is there are a lot of women who are judges and doctors and lawyers now, and they can do that well, stuff Well, I mean, themselves. statistically, women spend more money than men now. Women are the spenders. Yeah. like So, so we keep the economy going. Exactly. <laughs> so that makes, so that thinking of why the man should make more doesn't apply now, I think. Because, it, in, in, it, like I said, it in the doesn't guys. necessarily not apply, though, because because they still have a lot of expenses and we still spend a lot of our money on things um, that mm -hmm. don't really uh, matter. You know, she don't think men make more money it has nothing to do with responsibility, especially in the black community. She doesn't think they make more money. She she does. She uh. Hold on, let me read this well, the again. Black she community. said oh, it has about... nothing to do with their responsibility, especially in the black community, as far as them making more money. Hmm. Well, nothing, and, none of that um, really. Men has. think they are control. Are men think they control in our own sex because in own sex because they are spending out so much financially. That's true, Robinson. Um, somebody else who is this? That was Robinson. Oh, Jennifer said my ex wouldn't get my hair done, a manicure, a pedicure, or nothing. Wow. Yeah, most time, yeah, most that's personal, yeah. <laughs> and, but you see that a, a lot in same-sex relationships and mm -hmm. female-to-female -female relationships where they feel like she need to, she was doing this before me, I'm not going to do this, whatever. But then what you said, that, that was her choice to take the L. That was her choice. But in some cases, though, it's not always... A man, if you if you come to me and you was paying for all that stuff on your own, then you was paying for it. But I don't date women with weed. If you got weed, it mm -hmm. stink to me for one. <laughs> Makeup is get on your clothes and it stain your clothes. So, um, I don't know. But fifty dollars for some fake nails and <laughs> hair. I, I'm I'm just saying. Then when the person take it off, they don't even look like it. Well, I'm not a physical person like that anyway. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know, but I do, I have, I do see it a lot, even with females. Like I said, during my dating phase, they'll come off and start talking about ratting, going down uh, a, a list of bills that they have, and I'm looking like this. Only I've only been talking to you for a month, <laughs> but thanks for telling me that you're looking for help and not love. And there's a difference because some people are just looking for somebody to take care of them or somebody to split some bills with. They're not really interested in having a relationship. They just need somebody financially to help them pay a bill. Well, the, but, thing, the thing about that, though, mm -hmm. first of all, some people aren't really lesbians. <laughs> some people just like women and are comfortable with women and are mm -hmm. uncomfortable with men. Mm -hmm. So they end up in relationships with women or here more recently some women aren't really lesbians but they can't find a man for whatever reason so mm -hmm. they're having relationships with women so they can get help right okay and that's, that's happening a lot yeah right uh and some women really just aren't lesbians you know what i'm saying there, there's women who love women and then there's mm -hmm. just women who are comfortable with women you know with <laughs> women but you can build a commune if you just need help with the rent. Right. Like, you ain't right. got to be licking on pussy. <laughs> but it happens. It's a lot of people. <laughs> That's a they tall order. Here, right. And <laughs> they just looking for help in some place to stay and financial right. help. And then they. But I'm not going to lick your pussy just for helping <laughs> right. my rent. 
Exactly. Right. I, I wasn't going, but see, y'all talked about Can me. I say pussy? Yeah. Well, we already been killed right. off iHeart. Right. Um, but but everybody thought I was wrong. Wait, wait, wait hold on. Sex. Mm-hmm. Oh, hold on. That's why these girls be looking for them touch me knots. Right. Oh gosh. Right. Ooh. Yeah, they want the touch me knots Just because good. they because yeah. they don't they, really want to be in a lesbian. Right. Relationship. They don't really want to be in one, and they don't have to worry about eating no pussy, like you said. <laughs> if they're in the um, if they in the lesbian right. relationship, <laughs> if they in the don't touch me um, <laughs> relationship, and those relationships are horrible. Well, it was for me because I wanted to don't touch me, but I dated. Right. A young no, lady my friend, that was my a friend don't told touch me, me she's in a don't touch me now, which mm-hmm. is hard for her because mm-hmm. uh, she was used to using her hands and stuff. Right. Um, but yeah, I'm just being messy now. <laughs> but, but anyway, I feel you though. No, I'm just saying, like, you ain't got to do all of that. Like, just to get your rent paid. Just to get your rent paid. Like, this is especially here in Atlanta. Get you like, a room it's people out. always <laughs> looking for rooms to rent. Right. Like, it's like, really, get your you can build paid. a community of, of women who support women. Right. You, yeah, you, somebody here always need a roommate. <laughs> I be having exactly. people ask me all the time. All I'm finna move time. to Atlanta. You know, somebody got a room for rent. Especially Atlanta with all the strangers moving to town. Mm-hmm. Not that you want a bunch of strangers in your house. Nope, right, no. We, you know, Mm-mm. there was a time where uh, people in the black community had to rely on each other, so we mm-hmm. were more industrious. I, I really think, like, you know, mm-hmm. fighting for. E- equal rights and all of that actually might have done a disservice to us economically mm. at a time where we we were educating our own children we right. were supporting our own grocery stores providing transportation for each other carpooling to work right. and things like that and now we we don't so much you know rely on on each other the community we kind of the rely community on outsiders to you rely on for yeah. support yeah, and I think, um, and I'm, honestly, even, you know, Martin Luther King, had, towards the end there, he was like, maybe segregation or desegregation was not necessarily the best way to go. He, um, yeah, he definitely got disillusioned with yeah, that plan, right? Yeah, like, maybe it wasn't the best <laughs> Oh, wow, well, I'm sorry, Jennifer. She said that her, her ex was a don't touch me and she was abusive. That's sad. Uh, you, yeah, she's double losing right there. No, don't don't be that. Don't be that guy. <laughs> that's but a, you know what? Sometimes person. I think that's why they be so mean because they not because they're so repressed. Yes, <laughs> they're just all built they up be tension. Mean them don't touch me. Sometimes you just gotta come one mean. time and then you'll be all right. right. But you and I don't even know where that stands from. But like I said, I dated what someone pent up orgasms yeah. unreleased. No, I'm, I'm <laughs> right. Well, Kimmy and 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 um Jennifer, I dated a a, a female. Well, she. That was used to don't touch me, and it's mm-hmm. a whole, it's it's a whole different. And at first, I was thinking maybe she's just a pillow princess. Uh-huh. But again, that came from not communicating and not paying attention to certain things in the mm-hmm. beginning. But um, again, that goes back to what I was saying earlier about what had been embedded in me. You, the boy in the relationship, you really ain't supposed to be touched anyway. Right. But dating her, and then I start. I'm I'm starting to ask questions like, why don't you ever want to touch me? And da da da. Mm-hmm. And then that's when you know we was talking, and I knew she had dated don't touch me. But in the beginning, she asked act like as if dating don't touch me was a problem for her. She wanted to touch, mm-hmm. but she really didn't. Mm-hmm. She enjoyed being a don't touch me. But when she came out and came into the life, she um was a straight girl. And that's how she got into the life. She was a straight girl, and she was used to don't touch me. He's taking care of her, doing whatever, not right. being touched, and still looking at him as a man, whatever. So we bumped heads real hard, real <laughs> hard. Um, yeah, they, dating some, I, I don't, it's, it's, it's a totally different world to be with um, someone who says, I don't want to touch you. I'm like, well, you're a lesbian, and my understanding is it's a woman who loves women. You're supposed to want to touch another woman. Like, you're a lesbian. How you a lesbian and you don't eat pussy? That don't make <laughs> sense to me. Right. But it mm-hmm. is what it is. It is what it was. Right. It is what it was. I know. I know. We ain't touched on a lot of stuff tonight, people. But again, it all. It's a good show. Though. Good it's, show. A, it's a good show, and we appreciate everybody for uh, learning a lot of things. In. <laughs> We're gonna get ready here and get out of here, though. Let me see what time it is. It's, yeah, it's almost ten. Uh, we ran our normal mm-hmm. show time where we usually run seven thirty, eight thirty, nine. Yeah. yeah. The normal time where we was doing before. Yep. So we're gonna get ready to get up out of here. Um. Just do you want to say something? 
Ah, uh, no, nah, this is fine. I feel like such an instigator. Yeah, so thank you again for tuning in. We did go over, but y'all love us, so it's okay. Well, we really didn't go over. We hadn't did a real show in a minute. Right, um, right. I had been cutting the shows, uh, cutting them short, keeping them short. But any good topic, we don't mind staying on uh, for a good topic. I'll see y'all on Facebook. Yes. <laughs> free the show, free your mind. Every Sunday at 6 p.m., follow us on Facebook, IG, and Twitter at LE Radio 2010. Join the hip team at www.leradio.org. This radio podcast is brought to you by Hip INC, an educational based nonprofit arts collective where creative minds come together, share, and create art. You can become a member. Donate and sponsor by going to www.hipinc.org. Like them on Facebook at The Hip Team and on IG at hip underscore INC.